your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Good morning. The damaged, a damaged BPL fuel line blamed for that Adelaide fuel leak. Two generators transported to BPL's Clifton site. Will it make a difference? A teen arrested after a high-speed chase. And Michael Pintar pledges to be a unifier at his endorsement event. It's all straight ahead. I'm Dwight Strawn, and this is Morning Blend. Wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day. It's the start of the start of a new way. You know that it's the start of the end of the old way. Good morning again, Bahamas. It is Friday, May 24th, 2024. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Again, I'm Dwight Strawn. Also this morning, we're going to be talking about mental health. It is Mental Health Awareness Month, and Dr. E is going to be back with us this morning. We're going to be talking about challenges that we're facing in the country, a seemingly growing number of people with mental health issues on the streets, especially here in New Providence. What can be done about it? She's going to be joining us early in the show as well as a co-host of sorts. And then later in business, it is our monthly morning brand series. Another great topic for you this morning in our 9 o'clock hour. That's all ahead. But first, it's time for the overnight, the latest breaking news from while we're sleeping and the top national and international headlines this morning. Overnight, a 17-year-old male who was seen putting on a mask outside a bank in western New Providence, apprehended by police following a high-speed chase. Police say they responded to the scene after members of the public reported witnessing two men putting on face masks while they were sitting inside a white Nissan vehicle that was parked outside the bank. We're told responding officers encountered that vehicle driving at a high rate of speed on Windsor Field Road. Police said that during the chase, the driver lost control and crashed into a wall near Tropical Gardens. Uh, Both suspects got out of the car and fled. Police say one of the suspects threw something in the process and that responding units cordoned off the immediate area and apprehended the 17-year-old. 
and they retrieved that object, which turned out to be a firearm, and they collected other items from the vehicle. The second person got away. He's being sought by police. Police say uh, they, they want to thank vigilant citizens who helped with this matter. They strongly urge the public to remain aware of their surroundings and if that they notice anything suspicious to promptly contact the police and report suspicious activity. A 43-year-old woman who allegedly failed to report the abuse of her 15-year-old daughter to authorities has been remanded to prison. The Haitian woman, whose name has been withheld, is accused of failing to report her 37-year-old boyfriend for allegedly indecently assaulting her daughter. The incidents allegedly took place between May 1st and 15th. The mother pleaded not guilty to failing to report child abuse and her boyfriend denied a charge of indecent assault. The mother was denied bail due to her lack of immigration status. The boyfriend, who holds permanent residency, was granted $7,000 bail and ordered to report once a month to the Carmichael Road Detention of Carmichael Road Police Station. The trial is set for August 8th. A 29-year-old man granted a conditional discharge after he pleaded guilty to causing harm to his girlfriend. At his arraignment before Senior Magistrate Shackus Deville, Tevin Lewis o- owned up to slapping the woman. The incident took place on May 11th. Lewis was ordered to attend counseling and to pay his victim $1,000 in compensation. A compromised BPL fuel line is responsible for a fuel leak in Adelaide wetlands in southwest New Providence. That's according to the Minister of Environment and Natural Resources, Vaughn Miller. Miller says the public utility company will be fined for the environmental violation. More from BPL. Two turbine generators were transported to Clifton Pier yesterday as part of the company's bid to meet demand on New Providence. It's coming just days after a holiday weekend plagued by load shedding. BPL senior manager for Corporate communications Arnett Ingram unable to provide details on the generators, but she says it's their first the part of their effort to meet demand in New Providence. And FM leader Michael Pintard urging FMs against firing fatal shots at one another because the party needs every single member beyond the June 1st convention. Pintard will face off against former Prime Minister Doc Hebrew Minutes when the party holds its convention. He was speaking at the endorsement night event held at the British Colonial in Nassau yesterday. Pintart was greeted by a crowd of FNM supporters, including former cabinet colleagues whom he served with in the Minutes administration, including former Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquest, former Minister of Tourism Dionisio Diaguilar, former National Security Minister Marvin Dames, former National Assurance Minister Brenzo Roll, former Health Minister and FNM Chairman Dr. Dwayne Sands, and former Minister of Labor, Dion Folks. Other former FNM MPs were present as well, and former FNM Chairman Darren Cash also attended. Overseas, an overnight fire in an apartment building on a narrow alley in Vietnam's capital killed 14 people and injured six others. State media saying today the apartment building in central Hanoi could only be accessed through an alley just 6.5 feet wide, preventing fire trucks from feet from reaching it, and firefighters eventually contained the fire by using hoses. The fire started around 12.30 a.m. and was accompanied by several explosions. State media reported the building had 24 residents at the time, 7 in the owner's family, and 17 tenants. The injured are stable and being treated at Hanoi Transport Hospital. And get ready for what nearly all experts think will be one of the busiest Atlantic hurricane seasons on record thanks to unprecedented ocean heat and a brewing La Nina. There's an 85% chance that the Atlantic hurricane season that starts June 1st will be above average in storm activity. That's the latest from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. Announced Thursday their annual outlook, the weather agency predicted between 17 and 25 named storms will brew up this summer and fall, 
with 8 to 13 achieving hurricane status. At least 75 miles per hour sustained winds. And four to seven of them will become major hurricanes with at least 111 mile per hour winds. An average Atlantic hurricane season produces 14 named storms, seven of them hurricanes, and three major hurricanes. NOAA Administrator Rick Spinar- Spinrad saying that the season is looking to be an extraordinary one in a number of ways. He said this forecast is the busiest in the 25 years that NOAA has been using or issuing one at this time of year. 20 other groups, universities, other government, private weather companies also have made seasonal forecasts, all but two expect a busier, nastier summer and fall for hurricanes. The average of those other forecasts is about 11 hurricanes, or about 50% more than in a normal year. In sports, like her former Blue Chips Athletics and team, Bahamas teammate Keyshawn Strawn, Rima Odebor is also on her way to the 2024 NCAA Division I Outdoor Track and Field Championships, and she'll be looking to defend her title. Odebor, a senior with the University of Nebraska Cornhuskers, qualified in the women's javelin Thursday, finishing second at the NCAA Division I West Preliminary Round Competition in Arkansas. Odebor turned in a best throw of 56.94 meters, in three attempts. Last year, she won that title in a massive throw, 59.49 meters. She has a season's best performance of 59.12 meters and a personal best of 60.54. Also, Anthea Charlton has qualified. She'll represent the Florida Gators in the women's long jump event. More on all of this in today's Guardian Sports section. The Bahamas Lawn Tennis Association has named its 2024 Davis Cup and Billie Jean King Cup teams. You can get all those names in today's Guardian Sports section as well. From the NBA, Jalen Brown matching a career playoff high with 40 points last night, helping his Boston Celtics beat the Indiana Pacers. The Celtics now have a 2-0 lead in the Eastern Conference Finals, Boston winning 126 to 110. At sports, and that's the overnight. Time for your first look at weather. weather for today we've got deep layered troughing that continues to generate showers and thunderstorms over the southeastern bahamas the second trough near the northwestern islands will move into the east while streaming moisture will enhance the chance of shower activity in the northwest and central bahamas boaters should be alert for possible water spout and funnel cloud activity and everybody in the uh, southeast bahamas should exercise caution as flooding is possible in low-lying and flood-prone areas during heavy showers, prolonged rainfall, and thunderstorms. And some of these thunderstorms could be severe at times. And again, everybody's being reminded to remain hydrated and limit direct sun exposure during afternoon hours. For today, for the Northwest and Central Bahamas, your forecast calls for mostly sunny, hot, and humid conditions with isolated showers and thunderstorms Becoming fair and warm at night with the chance of isolated showers or thunderstorms. Gusty winds and higher seas expected during showers and thunderstorms. Winds east-northeast to east-southeast at 10 knots or less, falling light and variable at times. Seas 1 to 3 feet building up to 4 feet along Atlantic exposures. For the southeast Bahamas, partly cloudy with occasionally overcast skies, scattered showers, rain and widely scattered thunderstorms that may be severe at times becoming partly cloudy with isolated showers and thunderstorms by the afternoon. Gusty winds and higher seas expected during showers and thunderstorms. Winds northeasterly at 10 knots or less falling to light and variable by the afternoon. Seas 1 to 3 feet building higher in gusts. 
Temperatures today getting up into the upper 80s, around 88 Fahrenheit, 31 Celsius for highs. Overnight lows tonight getting down to about 77 Fahrenheit, 25 Celsius. That's your first look at weather this morning. We'll have your extended outlook coming up after traffic in just a bit. You're listening to Morning Blend. When we come back, we're discussing the day's top stories right here on Guardian Radio 96.9. Your home for fresh news and smart talk all day. condition shouldn't define you. At Cleveland Clinic in Florida, we do whatever it takes to make life better today while discovering new treatments for a brighter tomorrow. From epilepsy management to specialized spine care and brain tumor surgery, we're delivering world-class neurology care for the day-to-day, for the days you live for, for every care in the world. Visit clevelandclinicflorida.org slash Caribbean. Looking to elevate your gadget game or a tech trouble simply slowing you down? Escape to a world of innovation at Custom Computers, your go-to store for the latest cutting-edge tech. Whether you need to upgrade your life with the best from Apple and Windows or your device needs a little TLC, the Custom Computers know-how store is the destination for unbeatable expertise and quality repairs. With two convenient locations, there's a Custom Computers near you on Patton Street in Palmdale and Caves Village. Or call 390 Nine six eleven hundred. The signs are clear. It's time to pay less for your current mortgage by switching to Scotiabank. Enjoy lower interest rates and no payments up to two months when you switch to Scotiabank today. Plus, we'll even pay your switch costs. It's that easy. Ready to switch to Scotiabank? Call us today at 242-356-1697 or visit bs.scotiabank.com to switch your mortgage to become mortgage-free faster. Screws and Fasteners World, Balfour Avenue and Palm Beach Street, has those hard-to-find fasteners for you right now. You can find stainless steel regular hex, carriage bolts, galvanized bolts, threaded rods, nails, self-tap screws, sex bolts, anchor bolts, turnbuckles, masonry tools, hand tools, and weed whacker strings. Check out the rope selection and car body fasteners, too. Special orders are welcome. It's your number one fastener store. Screws and Fasteners World, Balfour Avenue and Palm Beach Streets. Call 326-1976. Here in the Bahamas, we love our food. From savory kung fritters to refreshing coconut water, our cuisine reflects our vibrant culture and abundant natural resources. But as our population grows, ensuring food sustainability is more critical than ever. By supporting local farmers and fishers, let's honor our traditions, protect our environment, and ensure that the flavors of our Bahamas endure for future generations. Food Food security is in our our hands. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. For fast, reliable, and impactful printing services, look no further. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. We stand by our quality products that is second to none. Our affordable pricing and friendly, efficient staff makes Printmasters the ultimate choice for all your printing needs. We can deliver any type of printing services, from banners to booklets to business cards. You name it, we can print it. Let Printmasters bring your masterpiece to life. Located the Nassau Guardian Building, telephone 302-2361. At Simplified Lending, we've unscrambled the loan process, making it fast and hassle-free. Personal, business, medical. You apply, we'll reply in as little as 24 hours. Call us today at 603-1730 or stop by Simplified Lending in the R&D Plaza on JFK Drive. Simplified Lending for Simplified Living. Simplified Lending for Simplified Living. Simplified Lending for Simplified Living. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Wake up, it's a new day. 
wake up, it's a new day. It's the start of the start of a new way. Don't you know that day? It's the start of the end of the old way. Wake up, it's a new day. Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We are streaming live on GuardianTalkRadio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for your smart devices. We're also on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 and BTC Flow Channel 612. You can tweet us at MorningBlend969 or Facebook.com slash MorningBlend969. Text us on the Guardian Radio text line powered by BTC 4224796. Standard text rate supply. Once again, I'm Dwight Strawn. This morning, I have a special guest co-host who's going to be the guest for the show, but um, uh, but she's going to join us earlier because she always has some very great insight into the problems we're facing in the country. Dr. Enrica Richardson, Dr. E. Good morning. No pressure at all. I got this. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here with, this, with us this morning. Thank you. Well, good morning, Bahamas. I hope everybody is up and on their way and ready and, you know, getting your tea and coffee this morning. Mm -hmm. It's Friday. Hey. Have a great day. Oh my goodness. I've never heard such wonderful words. <laughs> it's Friday. It's <laughs> Thank goodness. All right. Um, so in our 8 o'clock hour, we're going to start. We're going to have a discussion on what's happening. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. Yes. Um, and it seems, I know you, we, we don't have any evidence to support it, but it just seems that as you drive around New Providence, you're seeing somebody new who clearly is battling a me mental illness, mm -hmm. um, doing all manner of things to themselves. And um, these aren't the same people you saw last month. No, I, I, I agree with you. I think the number is increasing, the number of people who no longer have coping skills or resiliency to deal with all the changes that's happening. And ironically, it is, like you said, it's Mental Health Awareness yeah. Month. So maybe even we're more conscious of, of noticing it and realizing how much support and help is needed throughout mm -hmm. our country. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that coming up yep. in a little bit. And then later, we've got Morning Brand. Um, always a great discussion there in our 9 o'clock hour. All right. So right now, though, it's time to talk about what else is in the news. And in the news, really quickly, just I uh, want to get this out of the way before we get into our the bigger stories here. Um, that fuel line leak that everybody was concerned about with Adelaide, um, it's been determined that it's a BPL fuel leak. Hmm. And uh, the, the Minister of the Environment and Natural Resources, Vaughn Miller, says BPL will be fined surprise, for surprise. the uh, violation. Fined. That's funny. I mean, do they have the the money? The money? Because, I mean, like, please yeah. let us get it first. Working power before we do such a thing. And speaking of that, uh, two generators, this is the same thing they did a few years ago, with those big things they that did the slow crawl through the streets of New Providence. Two new ones, or I don't know if this is temporary, but they've been brought to the Clifton site overnight um, to help meet demand for the summer, which we'd been told earlier wasn't going to be an issue. So this is in addition to the ones we already have, or these is just two to replace the ones that aren't working? So we need clarity on that. Both? Because I was thinking about this with all the power outages and the fact that we have all these new developments um, between real estate. Now we have the new Royal Caribbean thing and all the other developments that are happening. Mm -hmm. I'm like, can we really meet the demand? Um, can the load handle it? Yeah. And, and so you know the answer. It's no. Um, and um, you're right. There are new developments. There are new gated complexes. There are resorts, uh, part-time resorts, yep. um, 
people expanding existing resorts, right? All manner of things going on. But hey, hmm. So yeah, this is uh, we're being told part of the effort to meet demand. Um, and the, these two, yeah, they're going to supplement, but also whatever is out for maintenance will. Uh, okay. It's, it's it's all of the above. Um, but um, you heard the, uh, in the news just how horrible this summer is going to be. Apparently, with the hurricanes and the heat, and um, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. But, well, um, well but that's definitely something to look forward to. Let's keep our fingers crossed for BPL <laughs> and for all <laughs> for all of us. For all of us. Yeah. All right. So um, we'll get to what the FNM did last night in just a bit. But this, this story here, this is um, just. I'm glad you're here this morning oh, to help us understand what's <laughs> okay. going on with our people. <laughs> Teen arrested after high speed chase. Right. I saw that. Yeah. And at 17. 17. A 17 year old male who was seen putting on a mask outside a bank in Western New Providence. He's right there in the parking lot in the car putting on the mask as people walk by. Like, what is that kid doing? Right. And it clearly wasn't one of these uh, um, uh, it's COVID It's not masks. a COVID mask, no, right? No, no. Um, something else. Mm. You know, I it's, it's really disturbing now to think that I feel like the violence and the amount of perpetrators of crimes are now getting younger and younger. Mm-hmm. And it just talks about the destabilization of the the family, the family system within our country and how much we really need um, strong parenting, strong parenting values and active parents. And I know a lot of parents are interested in providing, but make sure you're in providing, you're also providing emotional and mental and social support because that's also a part of parenting, not just providing stuff. And I get it. We're all in a place now of needs and survival, but you know, that night of coitus meant that you were also entitled to parenting. word for this early in the morning. Well, okay, uh uh-huh. But, you know, it's a great thing that you put it like that because that's what you think about. But I'm thinking, you know, about the parent who's like, you better find a way and get out of my house and find, because I don't have anything for you. Yeah. And so at 17... Desperation. hmm. We're in survival times. And and I just think now that, that... a child, it's a child. That mm-hmm. child's life is ruined, and, and now they're going to be imprisoned. And now that's create another level of a system of issues. And so we have to do something yeah. um, in our country to help the youth, and especially the male youth. Women, who are you going to marry? Think about it like that. Like, if we don't support our, our brothers right now, we're really going to be in desperate need. These guys are usually okay, though. Oh, they People are? People always have kids with them and... No, that's that's they that's, 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 that's always, always got plenty baby mamas. <laughs> I don't, anyway, let's um, <laughs> let me for those who don't know the story, let's read what happened. Okay, so the, the police apprehended um, the teenager after a high speed chase. Police responded to the scene after members of the public reported witnessing two men putting on face masks while they were sitting inside a white Nissan that was parked outside the bank. Oh, can you imagine? Um, responding officers, at least they. Responded. Yeah. Responding officers encountered the vehicle in question driving at a high rate of speed on Windsor Field Road. Police say during the chase, the driver lost control and crashed into a wall. Both suspects got out of the car and tried to flee. Police say one of the suspects discarded an object in the process. They apprehended the 17-year-old juvenile and retrieved the discarded object, which turned out to be a firearm. You know, I was thinking, one, I want to congratulate the citizens. Now we're so active and vigilant because we know we are taking back our country. We no longer can rely solely on, um, you know, the police system to make sure that we're safe. And so I'm glad to hear that citizens are speaking up to ensure and make sure. And the other part I was thinking, how many officers responded? Because if you had two suspects and one ran in the other direction, did another car? I I just have so many questions. We should be thankful they got one. Um, hopefully he'll speak, he'll talk. He'll tell yeah, I really do, because was. we have to do something, because we just had something earlier this week, and I, I thought to myself, now families are impacted by that, mm. and did we catch those um, suspects yet? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so the police is definitely thanking the public and um, encouraging people, citizens, to be vigilant, watching out, and um, and assisting. Don't get jaded because of your last experience. No, right. we, we really have to help out. Yeah. It's really yeah. our job now to take to make sure that we're ensuring our own safety. And please call. They will pick up and they will respond. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, okay, some text messages. You can text us, 422-4796. You can call in, 323-6232. 325-4316-325-4259. Calls toll free 242-300-5720. Um, uh, Dwight, where do you expect him to put on the mask? At home? Do we know if he has air conditioning? You are really focusing on the wrong thing. Um, <laughs> it, do we know if he has air conditioning in that car? It's hot. I wouldn't want to wear a, ma- a full mask from home for the entire drive to the bank either. <laughs> Maybe this yep. is an attempt at comedy. Yeah. Uh, makes much more sense to bring the work clothes and then put them on what, when you arrive at work. I did that a few times. It also helps with beating traffic. Hmm. Thank you for that information. Yeah, keep it up, everybody. Do that in the car in front of everybody. We think we appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Are we just missing the point that, first of all, <laughs> they're just the, to be funny. I hope. Yeah, they, I hope I they're hope. trying to be funny. I but hope. also the fact that you know, I'm not saying that critical thinking is necessary in in doing, you know, armed robbery, but it, it probably is. Just saying. <laughs> like, it's, can you imagine the mask? I mean, it, to me, like, this is now connected mask? to the... mask? What type of mask were you putting on? Like, you don't think people are going to notice the, this? Or, and this is also connected to level of education, because I'm it's thinking, we're not critically thinking this plan through wait, all the way. Wait till you find out the age of the other one. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Um, uh, this is back to BPL. Those two engines are our Sun Oil engines. Who will sell power? Well, we don't know. But in any event, uh, will it be enough? That's the big question. Um, okay, Texter. Oh, man, you all are very annoying. Dwight, you finally said the nationality of the woman who was charged. Hey, it only comes up if there's an issue. If you don't hear the nationality, that means it's a Bahamian. Do you not understand how things work? Huh? The person was here illegally. Come on, nobody's trying to protect anybody. The news is the news. Get it through your thick skull, <laughs> you psychopath. <laughs> if you don't hear the nationality, the person is a Bahamian. Yeah, our xenophobia, Come on! Our xenophobia is real, like, it's common sense. Where was your bleeding heart for that woman? You are an idiot. Mm. A true idiot. Let's take this call. Good morning, you're on the air. Golly day stock, you know, it's so long with you and your guest. Hi, good morning. morning. Hey, thank you. Ah, <laughs> do I just you make my day? Mm. I can tell you any lie. But excuse me, it's just as my mind was traveling from what you were saying. Uh-oh. You're breaking up there. What happened? We lost them. Are you still there? No? Is he gone? Yep, okay. All right, call us back. Um, uh, he'll be out on bail in no time. Well? Then what do we do? What do we push to make sure that the, the charges actually stick around and to make sure that, you know, people who are committing crimes are actually staying in prison? Because I saw, saw some news flash the other day that said that I think it was somebody who did robbery and gun possession, or was it murder? It was something, and they got like five years. Well, no, the guy who was a, a drug smuggler, dealer type, um, he got, he had a, a whole cache of, dr- of guns and drugs and got five years. That was the max for all of his, all of the charges. Such a deterrent. Concurrent, five years. And the, the, the National Security Minister says it's appropriate. Understood. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Critical thinking starts at the top. So, yeah, he may be. He'll no, be, he'll back be outside to do it again. By 20. Five years. 19. Is he actually going to be in prison? Because I've heard those oh, stories. Back to that and, one. Anyway. Um, <laughs> well, he's only 30 now. He's fine. <clears throat> um, good morning, Call you on the air. Hey, good morning. Good morning, uh, Dwight. Hi. Good morning, Dr. E. Morning. Good morning, Wallace. I'd like to just segue a little bit away uh, from, from, the, from the topic of, of crime, uh, this being Mental Health Month. Uh, what I'd like to, to, to see um, happening in the schools is, is uh, just uh, some installation of, you know, those uh, fields for, for, for um, the protection against the sun and the heat. Install some of those beautiful fields. They have come in different colors and variety and size, and a lot of the schools um, should should think of investing in those. Uh, the government should think of investing and in putting some of those sales up. 
uh, to keep the areas cool, you know, for the children. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what those are, but maybe I, maybe we can get some information about. towards them. Well, yeah, I mean, the public can always you can always donate them. So the public can always donate them. Mm. They, well, they're coming from us anyway, the taxpayers. Mm. Good point. Okay, so it's just a matter of digging out of the box and creating creating safe spaces. Um, you've probably seen them around different nightclubs and stuff. They have them. Um, and different shapes and sizes, and they're they're stretched to create like a canopy over oh, a particular okay. seating area. That's what I'm talking about. They're not very expensive, um, and to install them is just a matter of adding three or four lines in different directions, and then you, you can always add outdoor air conditioning at schools. Out of schools, yeah. I mean, it's a great idea, but I know right now, I think what's hard is our teachers are already paying for the classroom supplies for their students. Make and so power. maybe we could make have... Them, make them solar power. Great idea. Uh, it's not an energy, it's just not an energy burden. Great. We've that- got to do something different that we've never done before. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Have a good- All right. All right, let's take another call, and then we'll get back to your text messages. Uh, good morning, call you on the air. Morning, Dwight. Hi. And morning to you, guys. Good morning. Wonderful. Dwight, listen, I, the amateur robbers, right? Um, what I don't understand, we, it, it ain't like we just have a high-speed chase in this country three and four times a day or, you, you know. sure? Very, very frequently, right? Like it but might when, be more than we, more than we think. Mm-hmm. What, well, okay, fine, but right, right when we do. Now it's only 21 by 7. Mm-hmm. There ain't much places you could basically run and hide. Where are the drones? How long would it take if the police radio in and I'm chasing somebody down Carmichael Road going on the Gladstone Road? How long do you think it would take a drone to get it to, 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 to surveil that area so we can know exactly where these fellas running, where they're going? And what happened to the vibrant dog patrols that we used to have? Where the dogs in, in, in the patrol cars? Well, what's going on with that man? Because it is, it, to me, it's, it's unbelievable that you could say someone got away. You understand? Mm. Now, I hear you making light of the, the, the BPL generators, but my question is, what oh. most payments will I need guess what to know, where they come from overnight? Because obviously, if we ain't generating enough power with what we got now online, it's supposed to be there. Where these new generators come from overnight? Who they belong to? We need to know. Mm. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for taking my call Thank this morning. Much. The only thing about the dog thing, I don't know if you can... Um, that's a little tricky in a residential area, I think. I think that would be... But but yes, drones, CCTV. Keep where going. is CCTV? Is right. that? Where did, it, where did it go? Right. Um, where is it? Um, what's going on? Absolutely. Um, right. And I was thinking about that with the uh, teenager who's missing as well. If we had a true network, you would see. Um, we have another one missing. Did they find the, I got that marker alert last night for the kid in the Luther. Right. Did they find him? I haven't heard anything. Um, so yeah, you have to wonder, but you know, if it's on Family Island, they know that's not going to be easy to. But um, but yeah, so yeah, many questions, many questions. Yes, drone CCTV. Sometimes things just seem to be more difficult than they should be around here. It's very odd. Um, all right, so we'll get to those calls in just a second. Let me read some more of your text messages. This person says here, I think a serious study should be done on all students that were in primary and junior high schools during COVID to see their performance now. I suspect a review of a number of them, like this kid now at 17, will reveal how poorly socialized or educated they were during that period. Um, education really failed during that critical time, and society will pay for it with I, those that fell through the cracks. We're already paying. It, it started before then. It just got worse. <laughs> that is true, too. That is true, too. Um, the lady and her son that only got five years, well, only the son, um, were supposed were. Um, what? I like how you have to pre-read yeah, the messages yeah, before you better. read them. <laughs> mm. Oh, okay. Well, that is a serious claim. Um, what? Uh-oh. Oh, dear. Oh, boy. Don't read that one. I have to verify that one first. Um, 
Okay, another one that I'll have to verify. I still can't get Guardian Radio on my phones. Please don't say reboot. Um, you got close out the app. Try that. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take your number down, and we'll have um, our techs give you a call, see what's going on. Um, let me, I'm just trying to get the number. Okay, uh, let's take this call. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Mr. Strong. Good morning, Dr. E. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you know, Dwight, uh, Dr. E came out me this morning, you know, between uh, Dr. E, the Cressa, and uh, the Candy League Moss lady, right? Their voice in itself, but a rough, harsh voice in me on is therapeutic at best, right? <laughs> and so just to hear them speak. So I know Dr. E don't have a problem with healing uh, uh, patients or whatever, but, but what I'm saying is I like how she highlighted the fact that teachers are subsidizing materials for classrooms. And I know that for a fact. And so when I look at the primary schools, the government primary schools, the influx of migrants and the lack of attention, financial attention being given to public primary schools, the, uh, the, the, the narrative about education is a farce for somebody like me. So I would really like to get in contact with Dr. E and because I needed to psychoanalyze me because I'm, I'm, I'm like something is happening with me with the lies from the pandemic. Go straight up. I'm, 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 I'm uh, somewhat autodidactical because, you know, I mean, my teacher teaches me from grade six to grade up, right? So I can't call myself self-educated, but I am somewhat. And I don't go with status quo narratives because there's a lot of lies. I'm suffering from anxiety, lying disorder, whatever you could call it, doctor. You need to analyze me. Don't tell Dwight. Nah, let's get on to the public's business, right? The gentleman who called and talked about putting up shades, right? Why can't we just put trees? Something natural, doctor. Absolutely. Actually, that makes sense. Yeah, and and we need them. You know, and, so, and so the trees do the offsetting. So that's why I'm not buying in, you know, any, I'm not a mainstream. See, the thing is about the plantation is when you're told something and you believe it, I consider you to be a sheep mm. and you're done in too deep. Now, uh, I don't know. Uh, I wanted to touch on the BC situation, right, Mr. Strawn? So I had said a couple of days ago that fuel leaks is one of the problems, right, right? Right. Yeah. So because I work around in a plant room and generators, so it, it, is, it is not an enigma to discover or know quickly if you have a fuel leak by doing pressure differentials. It, it is, there's nothing new about this. You, you, you know that if a boiler uh, generator uses this amount of fuel per hour, it's on the nameplate or whatever, you can calculate how much fuel they're using per shift. And so when you see fuel consumption up, obviously it means fuel leak because fuel is going somewhere. Now, I'd like to report a, a fuel leak that happened about, uh, what is this, Jesus Christ, man, uh, about 20-something years ago, right? <laughs> right? Mm. At, the, at the Radisson, in which uh, about... 3,000 something gallons leaked into the ground. And so I knew because I was on the night shift. And so I, I, I automatically knew because one of the parameters was you take the reading at the beginning of the shift and you take the reading at the end of the shift. And so the fact that you had the, 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 the balance of the fuel, which is about 3,000 or 4,000 gallons, that actually leaked out and the boiler shut off and wouldn't turn on. So we, 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 we can't be uh, uh, bamboozled or baffled by what we're seeing at BC. So the fuel surcharge obviously has to have something to do with fuel wastage. Not that's all, but inefficiency of fuel burn. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I mean, come on, man, right, man. We, we, you know, as it relates to crime, you know, obviously, but I'm glad they called the young, you know, at, at the age 17, Dr. E could speak better for this than me. The brains are not developed. It shows that the dream world that they're living in now, I, you know, I don't know what, I, I'm, I'm vexed with people still wearing masks anyhow. I mean, the Ministry of Health should really warn people about wearing masks outdoors because that's one of the most asinine things that one can do. Well, why would you wear a mask outside and in your car? It'd be the guys have used this as an, ex- as an excuse, Mr. Swan, in the inner city, to put on a mask so people can't see them. It's convenient for them to do anything to fire us and nobody knows who they yeah. are. Well, That's definitely the ski, mask, the ski mask pandemic. thing is becoming They're still a, a wearing problem. masks. You see them, Dwight? Yeah. Now, Doc, I got a joke for you. Okay. You need to come in the inner city. Now, I, you know, I obviously agree with you because I see the amount of people talking to themselves. So I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago in the Guardian. Guys brushing their teeth on the main road. I mean, like, anything you could see, you wouldn't even, it's unbelievable. Bless up. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, we have a ski mask issue. I, I see in the States has become a, a race issue, The but but because they're saying it's a young, urban fashion statement. But in 90-degree temperatures to be wearing that around here, right? You we can only assume you're up to foolishness. But in certain states now, they are making it a law, so you cannot wear a yeah. ski mask in yeah. public. Um, that's, that's, you will that's actually an, be in prison. That's a lot. Um, but here, I mean, this this doesn't make sense. Where are you skiing? 
where are you skiing? And also, it's almost 100 degrees. Outside. That you're really giving off suspicion. It's not a fashion statement. We're not Kanye over here. So I'm going to need to leave these, those at home. The only masks you can wear are the medical grade or, or what do we call those? The ones you know when you go to your dentist, they wear mm-hmm. what we're wearing during COVID. Other than that, yeah. you're suspicious. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Let's take these calls really quickly, and then we've got to take a break. Good morning. You're on the air. Uh, Dwight. Hi. I was cut off by uh, several things I wanted to say, but knowing that you have to go, what I want to say, right? Uh, first, I want to tell you that uh, your show on yesterday with you and Chester, mm-hmm. that was dynamite. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, man, I want to say something pertaining to the show also, but it just got away from me. But also, I want to say, Dr. E. Yes. Uh, how are you? I'm doing great. How about you? Uh, I'm okay. The problem is we have in our Bahamas with a lot of, you know, stuff what's happening and crime and stuff like that. People are being trained off when when some people that aren't in authority talk down to them, you know. Yes. That shouldn't be in our country today. Okay, because all of us know from whence we came. Absolutely. Uh, other point is, oh Lord, Twitter, Twitter, if I remember that, I'm going to call you back because okay. it's pertaining to your show on yesterday. Mm, okay? okay, thanks a lot. No problem. But it was a beautiful show. We really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Um, and this call before we go to the break. Good morning. You're on the air. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Dwight. Good morning, Dr. E. Good morning. I'm going to make my commentary very, very quick here. Uh, Dwight, uh, let me first congratulate Guardian Radio. In fact, let me uh, put props up for uh, Naughty for the excellent show that he conducted yesterday. And why I say that is, obviously, a lot of persons in our society, uh, 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 it, like they have this, um, like truth is something that's foreign to them. They don't want to be questioned. They don't want to be asked anything. They cannot tell the truth for some reason. And I'm going to tell you, his show yesterday was was like <laughs> was like dynamite. I'll use I'll use my my brother's words just now. Um, what I'm alluding to, you know, the mere fact that you have a serving politician in our parliament can come on radio, give an interview, and also take questions from the public. This is something that we would like to see many of our persons in the governing party do, including the chairman of that of that party and the prime minister of this country. We would like for them to come on the airwaves, have the conversation, do the interview, and then have the Bahamian people call in to pose their questions. This seems as if that is, Guardian Radio offers that platform, and this is why we'll continue to congratulate you guys. You provide that platform for the average Joe Blow on the road to call in and speak to these politicians if they are inclined to come on to the shows, to do the interview, and to take questions. But we have some politicians, they would do the interview, but they would not take questions from the public. I'm trying to figure out who do they serve. Do they serve themselves, or do they serve the Bahamian people? That's all I want to say this morning. Again, okay. congratulations, Guardian Radio. Congratulations, Naughty. You did an excellent job. Thank mm. you. All right, so, you know, you got to put a... Got to explain that, though. Um, so it's not that they won't take questions they don't like to take. Some don't like to take the random phone calls. Um, and I don't blame them. Some callers, mm, um, but they have no issue with getting the text messages or tweets and responding to it. Um, but some some people, and people bring up personal issues or bring up their private matter that shouldn't oh. be aired. In public. In public and on the airwaves, right? So that's one of the issues there. And and for, for us as well, we don't have an issue with that because it protects us too. Yeah. Right. Um, but, but but there are very few who won't who won't come on the show and refuse to answer questions from the public. Um, but phone calls, that's a little tricky. A little tricky. All right. Um, uh, you want to squeeze that one in? Yeah? Let's squeeze that call and then we'll go to the break. Uh, good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, do I take call back? Okay. Yeah, do you see... Uh Question was for Miss um, Doctor E. Hi. Yeah, Doctor E. Tell me something. Now we do have a lot of uh, mental patients on the street, and it's dangerous, very dangerous. Okay, and I, I'm a blind person. I travel the street, and I know, and I know a lot of things. Why is it? that people like you are not doing anything about it. We are not hearing from you. 
Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Doctor, you want to save that for when we get back? Sure. Um, we're going to get into that in our 8 o'clock hour again. I don't think that's a fair statement, uh, Brayman. You, and Doctor is almost every May. I could I can use the word harassing us to get airtime, to get the message out, but she not only in May. Um, but anyway, she'll respond a little later in the show to that. That's what we're going to be talking about, mental health issues, in our 8 o'clock hour. But we've got a lot more of uh, what's happening in the news when we get back. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. This is AP News. I'm Rita Foley. Busy, busy, busy. The roads, the air, millions of Americans are traveling on this Friday before the Memorial Day holiday. The AP's Jennifer King. The patients of holiday airline travelers will be tested with modest cancellations but thousands of delayed flights. Friday is expected to be the busiest day for weekend travel. The Transportation Safety Administration predicts nearly 3 million people will pass through airport checkpoints. When they aren't waiting out flight delays, travelers are reporting sticker shock. Our flight was fairly reasonable. Larissa Latimer is traveling through Chicago's O'Hare Airport with her mother. But everything is up, up price. Uh, the rental car is up. Uh, like I said, hotel accommodations. About 38 million people are predicted to be on the roads this weekend. I'm Jennifer King. A lot of us are going to see some bad weather today. Thunderstorms, maybe with hail and high winds from Wisconsin to Texas and eastward to the Carolinas today. Israel says it's recovered three more bodies of hostages killed on October 7th. Israeli military spokesman Daniel Hagari. Our hearts go out to the families at this difficult time. There are men, women, children and babies being held by Hamas in living hell across our border in Gaza. Israeli Admiral Daniel Hagari. Renowned Sherpa mountain guide Kami Rita is back from Mount Everest this morning after his record 30th climb to the world's highest peak. The NCAA and five major college sports conferences have agreed to settle antitrust allegations for nearly $2.8 billion over the next 10 years. That deal also calls for a groundbreaking revenue-sharing model that could start steering millions of dollars directly to college athletes as soon as the fall of 2025. This is AP News. Overseas now, the U.S. is pushing for more aid to help Ukraine. The AP's Charles de Ledesma. The U.S. is seeking to build support for squeezing more money for Ukraine out of frozen Russian assets as finance ministers from the group of seven rich democracies open a two-day meeting. Another key topic pushed by Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is building a united front against China's subsidies for solar panels and electric cars. The meeting on the shores of northern Italy's Senec Lago Maggiore aims to build consensus for final decisions at a summit of G7 national leaders in June. I'm Charles Dolatesma. Hungary says it will move to opt out of any NATO operations aimed at supporting Ukraine. The Prime Minister is suggesting that NATO and the European Union are moving toward a more direct conflict with Russia. I'm Rita Foley, AP News.
It's time for first look at traffic for the morning, brought to you by RBC. Get a no fee auto loan with up to 100% financing. In real time traffic, hey, Prince Charles Drive, where that leak was. They've paved it already, folks, so that's amazing, isn't it? Um, so no issues there. But with traffic, um, once you get closer to the intersection with Soldier and Robinson Road, you'll be seeing heavier traffic there. And Robinson Road, a bit congested as you get closer to Old Trail. Eastern Road is busy, though, from just east of Fox Hill to Johnson Road. Elsewhere, we've got Blue Hill Road, heavy traffic for you. Just north of Soldier Road on the way to the roundabout with Independence Drive. East Street, just north and south of Soldier Road. If you're heading northbound, some slow-moving traffic there as well. Mile of Heather Highway, as usual, heavy traffic from well south of the Fire Trail Roundabout straight through to Tawny Williams Darling Highway. Gladstone Road, seeing some slow-moving traffic also just north of Fire Trail straight up to the roundabout with John F. Kennedy, Je- John Kennedy Drive and Bahamar Boulevard. That's what we're seeing so far. We'll have another update for you after the 8 o'clock news. Morning blend traffic brought to you by RBC. Visit rbc.com slash carloan slash all of you for more information. It's time for another check of your weather for today, brought to you by Easy Car Sales. We've got a severe weather warning in effect for parts of the southern Bahamas, Acklands, and Mayaguana. That's in effect until 8.20 a.m. That's all as a result of the combination of a mid- to upper-level trough interacting with tropical moisture moving northeast of the southern Bahamas. In fact, uh, we're watching that to see if that will develop, but that's moving away from the Bahamas at this time. So that again, that weather warning is in effect until 8 20. So here is what is happening. In addition to that, we've got um, a second trough near the northwestern islands. That's going to move east while streaming moisture will enhance the chance of shower activity over the northwest and central Bahamas. So for today, your forecast calls for mostly sunny, hot, and humid conditions with isolated showers and thunderstorms becoming fair and warm at night with the chance of isolated showers or thunderstorms. And again, for the southeast Bahamas, partly cloudy with occasional overcast skies, scattered showers, rain, and widely scattered thunderstorms that may become severe at times, becoming partly cloudy with isolated showers and thunderstorms by this afternoon. And everybody in the southeast Bahamas should exercise caution for flooding in low-lying and flood-prone areas during heavy, prolonged rainfall and showers and thunderstorms. And everyone's being advised to remain hydrated and limit outdoor sun exposure during afternoon hours. Temperatures today getting up into the 80s, upper 80s, 88 Fahrenheit, 31 Celsius for highs, lows near 77 Fahrenheit, 25 Celsius. In your extended outlook, a weak high pressure ridge is expected to build across the country over the weekend while the deep layered troughing moves southeast of the islands, taking much of the moisture with it. Drier, more stable conditions, along with light winds, will dominate the weather once we get through that. So for Saturday, tomorrow, mostly sunny and hot with a chance of afternoon showers or thunderstorms becoming fair and warm at night. Sunday, mostly sunny and hot with a chance of afternoon showers or thunderstorms becoming fair and warm at night. Back to that system we were telling you about just um, near the southeast Bahamas. That area of low pressure is expected to form within an area of cloudiness associated with the trough. The low has about a 10% chance of development while it sits across so just northeast of the Turks and Caicos Islands. But again, that is moving out into the Atlantic, so no need for panic, but we are watching it closely. That is your morning blend weather check brought to you by Easy Car Sales. Easy Car Sales has done it again. First it was BYD, then Jack, and now Radar Pickup Trucks by Geely are joining the all-electric family. With eight years of experience and three quality brands to choose from, there's an EV waiting for you at Easy Car Sales, home of the electric vehicle. Visit easy242.com to see the many options for ditching the pump and driving electric. Easy. 
Are you buying a home, renovating or exploring mortgage options? With cash back and up to 90% financing, we'll find the perfect mortgage for you. Pre-qualify in just 60 seconds and get connected with a mortgage specialist today. Visit rbc.com slash mortgages slash all of you. RBC. Conditions apply. Wendy's, we are different. We don't just use beef. It's fresh, never frozen. Our burgers are square because we never cut corners. Served hot off the grill with fresh lettuce, tomatoes, onions, and American cheese. We believe in fast food done right. Always serving fresh, never frozen beef. Order a hot, juicy Dave single, double or triple. Made with fresh, never frozen beef. Now only at Wendy's. Different inside and out. Mommy, why can't dogs talk? Why do I have to go to school and you don't? Why do you sing in the morning when you're bad at it? Why don't you brush your teeth when you take me to school? Why doesn't it ever snow here? Why does Daddy take the bus to work? Why are trees so tall? Why don't you tell me where babies come from? Mommy? 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 We're like a kid that doesn't ask a million questions before noon. CG Atlantic Agents and Brokers. Good like that. Maybe it's time to explore your options. There's no harm in reviewing your mortgage arrangement and considering a better deal. CIBC Caribbean can help you narrow your search and decide. Switch your mortgage to CIBC Caribbean and enjoy a special interest rate and help towards your switching cost. Visit CIBCFCIB.com forward slash inspired home for more information. Conditions apply. Here in the Bahamas, we love our food. From savory conch fritters to refreshing coconut water, our cuisine reflects our vibrant culture and abundant natural resources. But as our population grows and global challenges like climate change loom, ensuring food security is more critical than ever. We at the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources want you to play your part by supporting local farmers and fishers. Together, we can reduce our carbon footprint and promote economic resilience within our communities. Let's honor our traditions, protect our environment, and ensure that the flavors of our Bahamas endure for future generations. Bahamas, let's work together to lower our food import bill. Food security is in our hands. Food, food security, security is, is in our, our hands. hands. You've seen electric cars on the road. But isn't it time you drive one? Easy Car Sales invites you to experience the smooth, powerful ride and immerse yourself in the luxury and latest tech features. Find out why the Bahamas is going electric. Visit easy242.com and book your test drive now. What are you waiting for? Save money, drive smarter. There's an EV waiting for you at Easy Car Sales. Maybe it's time to explore your options. There's no harm in reviewing your mortgage arrangement and considering a better deal. CIBC Caribbean can help you narrow your search and decide. Switch your mortgage to CIBC Caribbean and enjoy a special interest rate and help towards your switching cost. Visit CIBCFCIB.com forward slash inspired home for more information. Conditions apply. Doctors Hospital has reimagined primary care. We have invested to improve our health system, ensuring that accessible, affordable, world-class clinical care is closer to you. We understand that your relationship with a primary care provider shapes the foundation of your overall health. Our new modern primary care facilities are where critical diagnoses and true personalized treatment begins. With locations across New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma, we invite you to experience the Doctors Hospital difference. Book your next appointment at clinics.doctorshosp.com. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. All right, we're about to go to the news, but really quickly, this person is asking a really great question. And they say, um, do you know how one can get on the list to receive Marco alerts? I received the alerts during the testing phase only, but I, I don't get them anymore, I guess. I only know a child's missing when someone asked me if I heard that a child is missing. And we got them last night, most of us, um, about a 13-year-old in Luthra who's been missing since Wednesday the 15th. Wow. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I know. You can be in a room. We were talking about this, Dr. E. You can be in a room with a lot of people. And 
Some people get the alert and others don't. We'll pick this up after the news. Stay with us. Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We are streaming live on GuardianTalkRadio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for smart devices. We're also on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 and BTC Flow Channel 612. You can tweet us at MorningBlend969 or Facebook.com slash MorningBlend969. Text us on the Guardian Radio text line powered by BTC 4224796. Standard text rates apply. And now at 823, it is time for another check of your weather for today, brought to you by Sherwin-Williams Paints. As we told you, there's a severe weather warning, a, a thunderstorm watch in effect for Acklands and May Iguana, and that's in effect until 820. We've got a lot going on weather-wise, and I'm heading into the weekend, but we do th- expect things to improve before the end of the weekend. So this weather warning is as a result of deep layered troughing that continues to generate showers and thunderstorms over the southeastern Bahamas. A second trough near the northwestern Bahamas will move to the east while streaming moisture will enhance the chance of shower activity in the northwest and central Bahamas as well. Boaters should be alert for possible water spout and funnel cloud activity. And residents in the southeast Bahamas should exercise caution for flooding in low-lying and flood-prone areas during heavy showers, prolonged rainfall, and thunderstorms, which may become severe at times. Plus, everybody's being reminded to stay hydrated and limit direct sun exposure during afternoon hours. So for today, for the northwest and central Bahamas, we're looking at mostly sunny, hot, and humid conditions with isolated afternoon showers and thunderstorms becoming fair and warm at night with a chance of isolated showers or thunderstorms. For the southeast Bahamas, though, partly cloudy with occasional overcast skies, scattered showers and rain, and widely scattered thunderstorms that may become severe at times becoming partly cloudy with isolated showers and thunderstorms by the afternoon into the evening. Temperatures today getting up to around 88 Fahrenheit, 31 Celsius. The overnight lows tonight getting down to 77 Fahrenheit, 25 Celsius. For the weekend, a weak high-pressure ridge is expected to build across the archipelago over the weekend while the deep-layered troughing moves southeast of the islands, taking much of the moisture with it. Drier, more stable conditions along with light winds will dominate the weather after that passes. So for tomorrow, Saturday, mostly sunny and hot with a chance of afternoon showers or thunderstorms becoming fair and warm at night. Pretty much the same for Sunday, mostly sunny and hot, slight chance for afternoon showers or thunderstorms, fair and warm at night. Now back to this system we're telling you about, uh, an area of low pressure is expected to form within that area of cloudiness associated with the trough over the southwestern Atlantic near the southeast Bahamas. The low has a low chance, about 10% chance of development while the area sits just northeast of the Turks and Caicos Islands. That is your morning blend weather check brought to you by Sherwin-Williams Paints. Sherwin-Williams Paints has got you covered for all your painting and equipment needs. Visit Sherwin-Williams Paints online or in store today. And it's time for another check of traffic brought to you by RBC. Get an Ophi auto loan with up to 100% financing. 
in your real-time traffic, a number of hot spots to tell you about. We've got uh, Prince Charles Drive and uh, Soldier Road. Heavy traffic as you approach that round, that intersection. If you're heading westbound, heading into Robinson Road, it's busy on Robinson straight through to uh, East West Highway, Marathon Road. And that area near uh, Old Trail is looking bad in both directions, east and westbound this morning. It might even be an issue just east of the uh, traffic light if you're heading eastbound on Robinson. Elsewhere, we've got uh, Milo Butler Highway heavy traffic for you from well south of Fire Trail straight through the roundabout into uh, Tawny Wim's Darling Highway if you're heading northbound. Over on Blue Hill, it's also busy near Soldier, straight through to Independence Drive. Independence Drive traffic back in both directions. Six Egg Roundabout, multiple issues there from multiple directions. It's busy eastbound on JFK, southbound on New Providence Highway, northbound on Mile Butler Highway, and uh, exiting onto Farrington Road if you're heading northeastbound. But also a bit of congestion on the entrance. Over heading Farrington toward the roundabout. Also going to be a bit busy for you there. And then onto Thompson Boulevard, you're going to be seeing some slow moving traffic eastbound this morning. Those are your hot spots. That's your real time traffic and your morning blend traffic alert brought to you by RBC. Visit rbc.com slash carloan slash all of you for more information. when it comes to product range and product knowledge. If it's a new product coming in the store, we walk the store and study that product. One thing with our boss, if a new product comes in, he takes the time and he is always keeping us up to date right. with product knowledge. Mm -hmm. And we just had nine weeks of different products that we had to study and we had exams at the end of each product. Yeah. The only way we could sell the product effective we have to know that product. Yeah, that's yes, helped us yes. to relate to our customers. It gives us better knowledge, knowledge to, to know what product to introduce to them. You understand? So we can know what product to give them to use and what product not to give them to use. Mm -hmm. So product knowledge is really key in Sherwin Williams. They got the keys, the keys, the keys. And the key is the product knowledge that comes with our extensive product range at Sherwin Williams Paints, Bahamas find color in every day. In the world of business, technology is not a choice. It's a necessity. And for businesses that demand excellence, there's only one choice for unparalleled support and cutting edge technology. Custom computers. You have challenges and we have solutions. Computing, networking, storage and printing for enterprises large and small aligned with premium brands like HP, Microsoft, Konica Minolta and more. Get tech done the right way with custom computers. Call the know-how team at 3 1101. You've heard of electric cars. Now it's time you drive one. Easy Car Sales welcomes you to experience the power and prestige of the latest electric vehicles. Plug in at home for a 65% discount off your gas bill and never get stuck at the pump again. Build your dreams of a better future with a better car. The BYD EV. Visit easy242.com to book your free test drive today. Save your money while driving in style. Only at Easy Car Sales. Are you a business owner or HR professional? RF's team of pension specialists are here to empower your employees with market-leading retirement solutions and to make implementing group pensions easy and cost-effective. With RF, starting or switching your company pension plan is a breeze, and there are no setup fees. If you're looking for strong investment performance and low fees, visit rfgroup.com slash empower and empower your team to retire comfortably with RF Group Pensions today. That's rfgroup.com slash empower. RBC. Life is full of twists, turns, and defining moments that create your own unique story. However your story unfolds, we're here to help guide you through it. From every big decision to every new adventure, RBC. Visit rbc.com slash Caribbean slash all of you. Earning zero interest on your savings at the bank? With as little as $100, you can start earning interest on your money while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank with the Seafeld Savings Express Plan. Ready to invest? 
Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at CFAL, your interest is our interest. Visit CFAL.com to start now. CFAL, growing wealth for future generations of Bahamians. Here's to the go-getters, the early risers, and the late-night dreamers. You, the visionaries, painting futures in your mind, in your studio, your office, your sacred space. Here's to the adventurers, explorers of every realm. To you, the innovators, turning the cogs of progress. In a world where connection is a lifeline, a pathway to possibilities, alive is the perfect connection for everyone, every lifestyle every day. Visit BeAlive.com today. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Some woman know they boyfriend got one or two sweetheart, but she ain't freaking out because she got a weight man. Some woman know they husband got one or two sweetheart, but she ain't freaking sure. out yeah. because she got a weight man. Okay, first thing, 9 a.m. The weight boyfriend got a checklist Wait for you to come sign in Then ask if you had breakfast She probably gone say no Even though her man look a sorchist Bacon, egg and grits Weight man made her forgot this Lunch time he gone slide up Crack some joke inside her office Compliment about her bongi Say that look like the softness Now it's four minutes to five He say come miss let me hug this Then smell a sweet perfume She say you know that I love this So if she need a ride right Show her to cry Okay, we're back with Morning Blend on Garney Radio 96.9. Dwight Straw with my special guest co-host and guest, Dr. E, Dr. Dr. Rika Richardson with us this morning. So uh, she's here to talk about mental health issues. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. And um, uh, the, the main topic is supposed to be what we're seeing on the streets in New Providence. About even Grand Bahama, the last time I was there um, a few months ago, I couldn't believe it. There were people walking around Freeport. <laughs> who look like the people we see every day in in Nassau? And of course, if you know about Freeport, you don't see that. They don't. Nobody's walking around Freeport. I don't know. I went to Freeport back in February for an event, and I hadn't been to Freeport in a decade plus, or mm. maybe two decades. And I just looked, and I was like, "Wow!" It was like I could see how the people were reflecting some of the what the island looks like right now, and mm-hmm. I feel like. We do need to make a big stink about Freeport getting the infrastructure it needs because it does not look like the place I remember. And it was so fascinating. But we really have to understand that not only mental health is real in Mental Health Awareness Month, but we have to understand what mental health looks like, whether it's subtle or not, because mental health is invisible a lot of times and people fail to remember that. And so just because you see the person on the side of the road, that doesn't mean a person in your house isn't dealing with something with mental oh, health wow. related. Mm-hmm. And I have to address my caller before. Yes, yes, let's do that. Um, Those who remember, Brayman called in to say, um, with the number of people that mm-hmm. we're seeing on the streets, why aren't we seeing people like Dr. E uh, in the streets um, doing more to help these folks? And he also said that they tend to be violent. And I want to make sure we... We understand that that's a myth. It's a myth that people with mental health conditions are more likely to be violent than others. In fact, research shows that only 3 to 5% of violent acts can be attributed to people with serious mental health illness. Mental disorders are, not, are ne- neither necessarily nor sufficient causes of violence. And so I need people to understand that most people who have mental health illnesses... They don't really want to bother anybody else. Okay. They're too busy talking to the people in their head. Well, let's break this down. Yes. Uh, so are we talking about the people who, who who appear to be homeless or the people like you mentioned who are in our homes who clearly have mental health issues see? who seem to be at any moment ready to snap and hurt you? But see, they don't want to hurt you. A lot of times they're more mm-hmm. harm to themselves. Okay so, sure about le- okay, so let's break that down. A lot of people we see right now who are walking the streets do we know if they have mental health issues or are they homeless? Mm. 
And I think we have to separate that. Well, they're first. talking to themselves and they're wearing all the clothes they have and they're like fighting invisible people. Okay, so those people definitely probably have a mental health mm, illness. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. And so they need mental health resources to help mitigate those symptoms. A lot of them don't know that things exist like the CCAC, which is the counseling, community counseling and assessment center, which is the outpatient version of Sandalins. Mm-hmm. Also, Sandalins has outpatient. I keep trying to tell people, Sandalins don't want to keep you all there, you know. Mm-hmm. It's more work from them when you have to stay inside. So but you can the go there and yeah. going there, though. It, it is a stigma of going there, but other than that, only thing you could do is go to the hospitals mm-hmm. and try to get some mental health care relief. We do need to have more community centers. And so when the caller is talking about what me and my colleagues are trying to do, we, we want to make I want to put it in perspective for everybody. In in our country of over four hundred thousand people, there are about last I knew the the Numbers, there was about 50 trained, trained professionals to handle the mental health issues. Over the last few years, that has grown some more, but we have to make sure, I'm using the word train, meaning people who have sufficient training mm-hmm. to be helping those with mental health issues. All right, so one, there's a deficit with the amount of people who are trained and skilled to help with those yeah. issues. Then on top of that, um, the resources that are there for to have access to needs and stuff like that. I mean, I've been talking and I've been doing it for years, going on any platform I can to help us be more aware of what mental health concerns are, mental health resources available. And I'm still questioning um, the, the stance that many of governments have said about their push for mental health awareness, mental health programs, even alone, I thought about it in this month, if, if people were going around and had information in schools about what mental health is, that would help. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to have social and emotional programs within our curriculums in schools. It's not happening. Mm-hmm. And so I am trying to have these conversations to make people more aware because while I try to spend my time in the community doing community work, I also have, um, a private practice that I have to attend to and students that I'm still teaching yeah. um, in colleges to help put this information out there. So a lot of professionals, we're trying our best, but there's only so much of us to go around. So and I think it's actually a little unfair to put that all on. I'm sure some people can do more, I'm sure. But, yeah. but, but, but we have to think about the Bahamas, the way we know this country. Like these people... There's very few people who have no connection to anybody here. Exactly. Where are their family members and friends? I'm sure they see them, and like how I see them every day. Do you walk around? Like, do you, what are you doing to help that person? Do you just turn your head when you see your brother on the sidewalk, half naked, begging? Exactly. Or here's another idea. Every constituency should have an office. We can turn a part of that office into like a safe space, even if it's not a mental health clinic, a safe space, meaning a place that people can go to for refuge, even if it's for a couple hours a day, whether it's a a child, an adolescent. So those community centers are actually used for the community. What are those constituency offices for? Usually I see them just locked up. Shouldn't they be used to help the constituents in that area? I mean, I have so much great ideas about how we can promote mental health and awareness. And y'all still got to tell me, where is the money from the mental health unit? Wow. All right. So um, we got a lot. And the callers are talking about Marco Alert. We want to get to that in a bit as well. So we'll get to that in a second. But um, and um, again, back to the original premise. So is it just me? Our, I remember as a teenager when I started driving, right. um, you knew you knew where they were. You mm-hmm. knew all the people who were on the streets who were not well, and there were maybe five. Mm-hmm. Um, they're always on this corner, and there was always that person over there, and they always did the same thing all the time. But each year, they're new people. They're more people. Absolutely. Each month, they're new people and more people. Each week, there seems to be somebody else. Is that my imagination, or is something going on? No, I, I think I think not only is there more people right now. Think about it. Um, a lot of mental health issues, not illnesses, issues are connected to socio and economic um, factors. And right now, we have a lot more people who are in survival mode, who are trying to figure it out, who have lost a lot of things over these last few years. And so I think you're starting to see the increase of people because there there is not a lot of resources for them. And so they find themselves outside as a, as a way to calm the noise in their head a lot of times. And so... 
I feel now that people, their ability to cope and be resilient has definitely changed and the skills and factors they would have had before to help them no longer work anymore. So we, we do need to really go back to being our brother's keeper and finding them and putting them in proper um, direction to find resources that do exist to help. Because we even talked about the homeless situation. So we, we think all of these people, the ones who do see talking themselves are most likely have a mental health illness, mm -hmm. but there are just a lot of homeless people right now too. So some of those people who have all their clothes on may not just be because they have mental health issues. They are homeless. They are, where are the shelters? Where, where is the safe havens for people to go? when they do not have any resources. Um, I know for a lot of times when I deal with clients who are in even domestic violence situations, um, some, some places, um, like churches and stuff that may offer refuge, sometimes they won't take a whole family. So if you go with your kids, then where do you go? And so we have some, some issues we need to deal with. Even when you think about the whole, um, you and I were talking about the Marco Alerts situation, I... I feel ill-prepared because I did not know it was actually in effect. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm a professional. I know all of these things. I'm like, where's the education on that? Are we doing a good job of going around saying that this system exists, how it's used, which numbers we call yeah. to, get, to get it started? And why is it taking days for it to be implemented? Yeah. Yeah, that's we were. I think many of us are finding out that there was an age limit for who, um, whom, whom this can affect or be impacted by this. Who can be included in this? Um, and the one that people got last night, yes, that's very weird. Um, the the person's been missing since the fifteenth. Wow, more than a week ago. Why are we just now getting an alert about it? Um, and so that's um, yeah, some issues there. And people asking, why am I not getting alerts at all? So lots of questions there. Right. How often do we test the system, right? We're about to, like, again, we're about to approach hurricane season next week. Have we started getting the alerts to make sure we are getting signals? And then if we don't, we could we could have a, a campaign that says, okay, everyone's supposed to get an alert at 4 o'clock on the 29th of May. If you don't get it, dial this number to make sure to add your number to the system. Maybe it's an issue with that that's happening. We, we need to figure it out because we're not communicating the information about the resources we do have. Yeah. Like with the alert. Okay, you do these steps to get it activated or you call this line, you, do, you give this information, this descriptors. It should not. Under no circumstances should it take a week for there to be an alert. Mm -hmm. Um they had to change that. They changed it in the U.S. because you can't wait 48 hours anymore in certain situations. I thought about the fact that all of our, our young men are going missing. And no one's talking about that. In the last couple of years, the amount of men that I've seen going missing mm -hmm. and, and young ones, where are they? Are we still looking for them? What is the plan? Are our kids being trafficked? Like I have so many questions that somebody needs to give us some information about. Yeah, yeah. Now, with that most recent alert, we don't know if the reason it's so late is because the parents reported the child many days after. Uh, we don't know. So many questions to be answered. I have no idea. What's then going on I'm there. thinking, how could a child be missing for mm -hmm. that long without somebody saying yeah. something to somebody else? So is that poor parenting then? You know it. Poor communication? Absolutely. Like, w w literally, like... One of my niece and nephews can't be missing for a couple, like an hour in the house. And I'm like, where are you? I need to put my eyes and you to see that you're in the, you say you're in the room. Okay. I need to go see. Yeah. So what are we doing? Terrifying. All right. So we've got callers. We've got a lot of text messages. I just want to ask you, um, this, this doesn't happen overnight, right? Where somebody like, I've, oh, I lost it. Let me go walking on the street. <laughs> no. It will be gradual, gradual progressive steps. signs right. that you are having challenges. Yeah, signs like you will probably start to feel a sense of like you're not in touch with yourself anymore. We know how that feels when you feel off. Mm -hmm. We call it a lot of times where maybe you start sleeping a little less. Uh, maybe your even your diet starts to change. Maybe you are 
having a great sense of ruminating thoughts, meaning one thought to another that you can't get any clarity with. Um, you feel like your mind's constantly racing all the time. Maybe you feel yourself being more anxious in different situations. Maybe you're becoming more socially introverted. Uh, maybe you even find yourself um, just isolating. Those are like general signs to start to look at and be aware of. Something may not be going so well with me, and these are things I need to notice. Um, maybe you become even more combative when people try to engage with you and say, hey, is everything okay? And that could be a sign too that something isn't, isn't going well. So we really need to pay attention to these signs. And if you're a friend or a family member, a loved one, who is just not doing okay, sometimes you it's okay to bombard them and get them resources, even when they decline, because at least you could say at the end of the day, I knew I did the best thing I could to help them. Mm -hmm. And that may mean that they, you know, they get upset with you, but I always tell people, go on the rule of thumb of, I did everything I could, rather than saying, oh my gosh, I didn't do anything, and now look what happened to my family member. Wow. Well. Well, let's take this call, and you can call in as well, 323-623-325-4316, toll-free, 242-300-5720. You can tweet us, you can Facebook us, you can text us, 422-4796. We're talking with Dr. Erika Richardson, Dr. E. Good morning, call you on the air. Uh, Dwayne. Hi. Ask Dr. E if the police stations in the in the neighborhood, gives her the, uh, the information or the, the uh, statistics when it comes to um, uh, mental health in the neighborhoods. Okay. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot. Um, I mean, I don't know, the police? Uh, uh, and statistics about what? I was not clear on what, so if the caller had more information but do we have any stats at all anywhere about anything know, about anything no we don't have educational stats we don't have um a lot of community stats in general about um violence non-violent crimes where we we we, we still struggling mm -hmm. to yeah no I, I wonder does anyone I mean, not that i'm doing anything about it but i mean does anyone else notice all the people missing walking about walking, walking about, about and, about, and about. going missing no. we can talk about both like but I mean, and it really is different people. Like, who is this one? Now? <laughs> it's a new one, right? It's like it, there's certain there's certain ones you would have noticed along the way right. who have been common offenders. Yeah. But it's now, rock, but now it's it's increasing. The number is increasing. So maybe the resources are not there. Meaning, um, a lot of people with mental health illnesses use a lot of substances to cope. Their access to those may have changed. So maybe that's why you're starting to see them more. Because a lot of people with mental illnesses try to be away from people. Mm -hmm. So believe it or not, they, they don't want to be yeah. around others. And that's a great point, too, because people often get confused. Is it the chicken or the egg situation? Right. You are, you are, because you use those substances, that's why you're on the streets and crazy now. But it might not be that. No. You use that because you're trying to cope. Let's think about it like this. Let's say you were a child growing up and you were traumatized at home. Maybe um, you, you had parents who were just verbally, emotionally, and physically abusive to you. Mm -hmm. And so um, that started to wear not only in your self-esteem, started to create anxiety and depression for you to the point where you couldn't cope with any of that going on. And then so you started to disassociate, right? Disassociate it from your reality. So most people create a new reality for themselves to live in a new world. That's what I'm trying to say. So you sit in there in the house in order to deal with the chaos, you create the world and the world in your mind then starts to spin out of control and become your real world. That's as simple as how mental health issues can, can transpire over time. Yeah. So when you think about all the yelling and stuff you do with your kid over time, you, you contribute it to their mental health issues. I want parents to understand that. And so then that person then goes out of the house and tries to find respite in other places, maybe other people. And then, you know, that one friend that they have that feels like a safe place and says, hey, come to this, come to this thing with me and maybe we try this substance. And then it becomes a thing where, oh, I feel better in dealing with these people who are verbally, emotionally, and physically abusive to me. And so the substance now becomes my safe haven. Mm. And so then how do, we, how do we blame the substance, really? Because it really started with the trauma at home. But most people don't want to take that accountability for the fact that you contributed to what has happened. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Wow. Um, so we're, we're all over the place because we're talking about the alerts as well. Um, and and yeah, I actually think it's, it might even be related, right, um, to just the challenges, the mental health challenges we're having. But this text is saying, Dwight, where have you been? The commissioner of police gave his reasons why he sent the Marco alert late to go check his press conference on. No, where have you been, Dexter? I'm talking about a different alert that came last night. Mm-hmm. We all know what he said um, about the alert for the 15 year, 16 year old. Um, and he said yes because it's for for children, younger children. But again, had had you heard before that it was going to be for up to a certain age? I'm not too sure if we all knew that. And we're talking about the alert that came last night. This alert about uh, uh, Ma- Matthew Tyson. Um, this is a strange one. Matthew Tyson Brave. Is his last name Brave? 13 years old of Queens Highway, Governor's Harbor, Luthra. Last seen Wednesday, the 15th of May. Wow. 5'5", five, five, medium brown complexion, slim build. Um, this was sent last night about someone missing since mm-hmm. the 15th of May. Yep. What's the excuse for that one? That's the question. Again, we say we don't know. Maybe the parents only reported him missing a few how, days ago. How? Maybe they thought if he's in Governor's Harbor, they thought he was with somebody in Rock Sound. I the don't phones know. not work? Or maybe. Are we still like, doing uh, like, you yeah, know, the, yeah, what, know, what was the devices back in the day where you have to tap Morse to code? Morse code or. Hey, to get a telegram. Tele, yeah. Like, or how did nobody mm. notice the kid was not missing? And let's say, let's say, let's, let's. Maybe. Let's say that they did. Let everybody know the kids were missing. Did then the police take it seriously and investigate immediately that the child was missing? Somebody got to explain to us why it takes yeah. five days. No, no, no. Not five days. Oh, ten days. Yeah. Ten days for an alert to go out. Ten. There's no way that we shouldn't have our alert system happening within at least 24 hours. If we say we need to investigate, then people should be on the ground, that department... For 24 hours doing their due diligence if they feel that that is necessary. See, well, it goes back to trauma because what if you've done this before and you always come back within 24 hours? Then are you really missing? Safe than sorry. Mm. Because right now we aren't finding people who go missing longer than that. What is our track record of actually being successful of finding somebody who's gone missing yeah. more than 24 hours? Yeah. Let's take this call. Good morning. You're on the air. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. E. Hi. You have a very, very, very clearing voice. I mean, you're, you're just listening to you speak brings me life. Thank you. So I'm pretty sure you're a great doctor. Uh, question for you. Uh, there was a time I read in China when the doctors were, they were paid a set salary. They were paid like 100,000 uh, equivalent dollars, whatever it is. And they were paid to keep the patients healthy. And when the patients got sick, they had to cough up money out of their pockets to pay to get the patient well. Would you like that kind of system? And if we had that kind of system in the Bahamas, what would be some of the recommendations and the cost of statements you'd be um, issuing over the radio to keep us well so that when we get sick, you have to pay? I'll hang up and listen. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay. So, so then the doctors pay if they don't get you well? Uh, well, it depends on so many fa- confounding factors, right? So let's say that they give you the treatment, but you don't follow the treatment as prescribed. No, I, I notice a lot of times we go and we get antibiotics, right? And most of us will take it for the first three days and then we start feeling better and we stop doing it. So then do you blame the doctors or do you blame the patient for not following the proper regimen? I always want more. You want more, more yeah, drugs? So do I need to I mean, do I need to assess uh, I mean, you? I just always <laughs> uh, to be caught to be on the safe side. But do the whole thing, like, right? I'm not well. No, but I, I hmm, mm. I feel that that one's the. Mm. It would. I don't know how we would monitor that when all of us are not the best patients. Let's admit it. We're not the best. We don't follow the regimens because I can think of clients I've been telling for for months now. Mm-hmm. You need to go and do a psychiatric evaluation for medication management, and they refuse to. So who then do you blame? Mm-hmm. Well, well, obviously, I think he said they used to do that, and they don't do that anymore. There's probably a reason, right? Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. going to assume it's a reason for you can't really you can't really assess for confounding variables that may happen, environmental changes, um, resource changes, all of those factors. Yeah. But we have, we get it. We, all thoughts we will listen to. Yeah. And often if you put people on medication, they'll tell you that it does something to me that makes them feel even stranger than the issue they were trying to, to occur. People Sometimes. to fix, right? People right. with mental health issues, it causes me to... 
not be able to do blah, blah, blah. Number and that's one, why I want to come off them. Right. The number one reason is that I get for people not wanting to or to come off their medication is that they don't want to be on medication for their life cycle. And honestly, depending on your mental health illness or issue, you may not have to be on it. But you have to know that if somebody's recommending it at that time. Well, I say this to my, my clients. If I'm recommending it for you, it's because I see the necessary the necessity for it at this moment. Mm-hmm. It does not mean depending on your mental health issue that you may need it for the course of your life. But until we can get your brain chemistry regulated to a place where your body may be able to produce the chemical that it's not, right. then we need to have something in addition to what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. And there are other people who, the second reason I usually get is because um, they they simply um, don't like this, the sleep. A lot of the medications make people mm-hmm. sleepy, right? Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times um, that's a good thing if you're suffering from mental health issues because the more sleep, the better it is for the brain to recover itself. And so when I find that people aren't sleeping, I'm very, very nervous. Whether you think you have a mental health illness or not, Mm -hmm. not sleeping is not healthy for the brain. The brain needs enough rest time in order for it to work properly. So people don't realize that. So a lot of you out there who have sleep issues, be very cautious. You may be on the verge of something. Oh, boy. Okay, Dr. E, you're making me feel (laughs) very good. (laughs) Let's Let's take this call. Good morning. You're on the air. Hey, Dr. E again. Hi. Uh, good morning. Morning. Um, Dr. E, I've, uh, I've just posed this one. It's something that Raymond said earlier. And uh, I think primarily, even though it wasn't dismissed, I'd probably just like to expand a little bit more on that. Okay. Um, if we follow the trends right now in the United States with persons who are missing, or um, even the mental health challenges, sometimes you, we will find that there are dubious persons who would either be doing some unorthodox things, such as introducing food uh, to create certain, um, certain, certain, um, what we would call symptoms or whatever. Uh, we know about, uh, or we have read or heard about child abductions and, and organ tra- uh, children and people for organ transplants, right. so on and so forth. In, that, in other words, what I'm saying is, the Bahamas is not an isolated place. We are in the world. <laughs> we are part of the global uh, concept. Uh, I would like to basically find out if there are statistics with the amount of persons that have gone missing who have been found, or what were the, the outcomes of them, what, uh, what were their mental state like, what was, what was their health like when they were found, so on and so forth. In other words, not to dismiss the fact that the Bahamas may not be a, a, a what I would call a red ground for certain things to happen here. But uh, from the law enforcement side of it or from the medical side, do you know of any statistics uh, or heard of any statistics where the amount of persons that have gone missing, who have been found, what were their conditions, where they were, and so on and so forth? These are some of the things that perhaps we need to keep an eye on to to basically grasp if, if, if we are targeted for that kind of stuff here in the Bahamas, you know? We can't dismiss it. Thanks for taking my call this morning. Okay. All right. Um, Dr. E, I don't know how you can answer that one. But, um. I don't know either, but thanks. Um, one of the things is we are lacking research in all, a lot of the areas to be able to give you guys the statistics on what's there, but we do need to hold the, like, for instance, you're asking about missing children. We need to hold the police accountable to give us the numbers. Um, I don't even know if we have a site available that still have the pictures circulating about missing do you know about if we have one do i like that goes around you know like you should be able to go online and say here are the faces of the people who are missing here are the com um the sketches of them and how they may age in case you see this person um i'm I, i'm offering some like ideas it's if we don't idea have one for here. out there i don't think we have a note to uh to neil burrows does a lot um with her various right. groups but i i don't know but, but I don't think we have the numbers, but I can just think of, I still remember some of the faces of the pictures of the kids I've seen who have been missing over the course of the year. And I don't remember as much 
um, success stories. I've, we, I've seen posters, and the posters now are increasing for these first few five months of the year. Mm -hmm. And just alone with that, we need to ask ourselves what is happening to our children. And let's say um, a lot of the kids who are going missing, we are not sure if it's mental health related, meaning that there's some trauma or something else going in in the homes. Um, we don't know if these kids have been abduct abducted, like we said. We don't know if they've been kidnapped. We are in one of the most um, accessible countries in the world for the waterways for child abduction, but we probably don't think about it like that or human trafficking. Are kids going missing that way? These are all questions we need to be asking and... We should have a conversation about it and maybe, you know, um, national security can address that as to what is happening, what are the numbers. And there should be a place where we have pictures, um, a website where we can go to with the kids who've been missing their descriptions, their pictures, and their pictures should be a part of it because I, I'm just not going to know a name. I'm not going to go up to every kid and say, hey, is your name Bob? So that I, you look like this child described. So we have to have a picture out there. And when these kids are found, we also need to alert the public saying, hey, that this person was found. So just the amount of attention we get when they go missing yeah. should be sent out to know that they were found and that it was successful. Because I still think about the the one young man from last year. I, I could see his face in my head because I remember the pictures on social media circ circulating so much. I don't remember the marker alert for that one. Well, he was too old, apparently. Well, we're okay. Let's let's get off the macro alert. We're our missing um, website for just missing individuals, people we have not seen. Whether it's an older person, a younger person, no matter their age, there should be a site mm -hmm. that we could say that this person was missing from this date and has not been found. So that maybe if we see the person, we can go ahead and identify. Uh, I'm sorry, notify the authorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, before we go, uh, this this text here. Um, Dwight, psychiatry is a pseudoscience. Why are you legitimizing it? Oh, okay. Um, to, to that person who has mental health issues from the text message we got, the pseudoscience will help you figure out why you're so hurt. Because hurt people hurt people. So we will be here to help you. Yeah. Well, let's read some messages before we um, uh, run out of time here. This person says here, um, we don't need to start helping anyone because obviously only women will get help and funds oh, wow. um, like everyone else. Women, The women have three shelters. Men have none. Let's talk. Where are the three shelters? Well, these are going to be for um, women in abusive situations trying to like him. Um, right. Where are they? They said there were oh, no, three. They don't, uh, often they, you don't know the location. To protect the no, no. I mean, like, how do you get? I didn't know we had three of them. I, 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 I would like to know that they know this information, so we could pass on the resource number for them. But a texter, if you feel that there needs to be one specifically for men, start it. Yeah, do it. Create it. Get your get your people together and and do it. Absolutely. Do it. Do it. But we, we, the problem that Dr. E mentions is we don't have a homeless shelter at all. No, not, not that I know of. Does yeah. anybody know of one? If no. you do, please let us know. I would like to pass on the information because no. there there aren't any shelters at all that you could go in, let's say, in the evening, get somewhere to sleep, maybe take a shower and leave in the day like most shelters are set up for. Nothing like that. We know there's a group working on it. There's a group, a private group working on one. Um, but there's, there's nothing... There's no city one. There's nothing here. And there's so many abandoned government buildings that I can think of that we could restructure to do something like that, like a dormitory system. And you know what I mean? And just have somewhere for people to have a respite mm -hmm. to go. Another person, this is a different person. Those homeless people are majority men. So there are likely, won't, there won't be any shelters for them. Um, uh, this text here. Shouldn't the alert come with a picture? Right, that's what you right. said just a few minutes ago. Yeah, it really does need that. Unless there is an app, people will not know if they're ready to go. People will not know that their children and family members even exist. What? People are so locked into their cell phones that they are placed into another world. Also, people have become more selfish and uninterested in family these days. Sorry to say that, but it's true. That's text. Oh, wow. That, it is sad. It's sad that we have become such a... 
we've allowed technology and a lot of our family systems to take us away from the idea of family connection. So I would agree with them with that. We need to do a little better to make sure there's times where we're putting down the phones and there's no electronics allowed that we're connecting with each other. Mm -hmm. Because if we're not, we're really in a poor state. And it starts with the people. So I'm going to assume parents buy the electronics for their kids or allow some other adult to do it. Then what are you doing to regulate it? And if you don't want to regulate it, don't get it for them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The government is not serious or interested uh, about mental health issues. They don't even have a dedicated outpatient facility in the country. Well, that's not true. That last no, part, right? We do. That's we we true. we have two outpatient facilities. Like I said, we have the Sandalands has an outpatient, not just only inpatient. They do both out and inpatient, as well as the community counseling and assessment center, which is on Collins Avenue, which is a completely outpatient unit. And again. When you only have um, limited facilities and over the population is way bigger than the facilities. And the, the number of people to the, help you. Right. You said. So we're in a shortage mm -hmm. and we really need the help and the resources to fund this. So private entities are trying. I'll tell you that because a lot of private entities will reach out and say, how can we do this? And there's only so much that can go. So. That's funny. I can see your face. I think we could dedicate the text line to help fight <laughs> mental, mental health, health illness <laughs> in the country. You it's know, a long way. You know, if 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 your text message is coming through, and I don't even know what they are because I can just tell by Dwight's face, and it has something with some level of hurt, you are probably dealing with a mental health issue, not an illness, an issue, and you need to address that because the level of animosity and venom i can tell by the and by so his facial early expressions in the morning, so early how did you wake up that way wow. that's really sad yeah, you said people aren't sleeping so maybe they, they didn't sleep they, they're not sleeping right. and and at the end of the day it's friday how can you feel that way on a friday <laughs> like if that's how you're feeling somebody please go get a hug today from somebody wow. and ask for so because we don't also want to violate anybody's boundaries <laughs> but you need you need you need something are there psychiatrists at Sandlands? Also, I think the workers need to be mentally evaluated or reevaluated because more and more people seem to be losing it, especially after a visit at Sandlands Rehabilitation Center, whatnot. Also, do you think illegal immigrants could uh. be responsible for the missing kids? These illegals could be traffickers or killers. Um, I, I don't know if that's the case. That's such a broad statement to make that it would be other people know. So, um, and, and exactly when we're talking about illegal immigrants, are we also talking about the quote unquote ones we call expats? Because there are illegal immigrants too in our country and they are more likely to transport kids, but they wear suits and stuff. So, and they have boats and yachts sitting up on our parts that we wouldn't think that they would be trafficking drugs, guns, and children. Because if, you, so, if you're illegal, you just came off a, a sloop or something. I mean, how are you going to organize a smuggling operation? Right, so we always think about the 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 desperate as well as the uh, most disenfranchised. We never think about the wealthy ones right. who have access and means, and those are illegal immigrants too. But we just give them a nice name and we call them an expat. Mm. And some of them are illegal, but they're organizing some things, I'm sure. Right. Um, great point of the website for those missing people. Um, why just post it on Facebook? Yes, exactly. Well, I think we have started to use Facebook as a community. Um, I don't necessarily know if Facebook was started to post it for missing. I think that's what family members and friends are started to do when there's things like need for blood or or this person has not been seen. And we've put that alert out there as, as, as citizens to say we're taking control of this and we need to make sure that the public is aware that our friend or family member is missing or in need of something. And I want to congratulate the people who do that because we do need the help. We need to help our armed forces to do their work. Okay, so listen to this. Uh, Marco's alert is localized. If someone from Anagua is missing, the alert will only be broadcast in that area. The That's Luth dumb. The Luther Sorry. alert after a few days was broadcast to the national population. So you're saying people in Luther got that a few days ago? Really? I'm so going to ask some clients about that. Is that because we now think he might be in Nassau? Is that why we're getting... Um, okay. I would assume... Okay. Um, I could see that... Okay, let's... I could go with that. Let's say within 24 hours, you put out the alert to the local population in that island, and then within 48 hours, it needs to go national. Because we are still 700 islands and keys. You can be anywhere. 
And if you're on a boat, you can be anywhere. Mm -hmm. We have too much waterway to say 24 hours locally, sure. But in 48 hours, it should really go out to everybody. And on top of it, just so we know, when a Marco alert goes out, it does not only go to um, local phones. It goes to anybody who's using the cell network. And so I say that because I have a U.S. phone, too. And I actually got the alert faster on my U.S. phone than I did on my Bahamian I'm phone. I'm not surprised. Um, if it was my text you read, I said nothing about three shelters. No, it wasn't yours. I, it's right. We, it, we don't get just text from you, texter. Anyway, <laughs> um, read the text carefully. Ooh. And um, you can say what you want, but saying that why don't you start a men's shelter? That's just a cop-out, Dwight, a feminist cop-out, and you know it. I don't know it. I don't know it. If you feel that's what's needed, um, you, you start it, right? Right. S- start it. We agree with you, Texter, that we do need more shelters, and we need shelters for everybody, for, for men, women, for children. We, we need safe spaces for people to go. And as we're we said, we saying, don't even have a shelter. We don't have one in general, so we're saying that if you have any access to resources, means, or a network of people who can make it happen, we're saying start it, and we will make sure the information gets out there to figure out how people could help the situation. Because right now we know that we have, our government cannot handle the, the load of all the needs of our people. And so we're asking citizens to step up and help out. That's all we're saying. Oh, gosh, it's getting worse. Okay, I'm going to put the phone down. Um, do you offer any, no, I don't want to <laughs> say that because this is a serious situation. Anyway, let's... Um, Dr. E, thank you very much. So, Do you have time? Do you want to yes, I'm sticking around. Uh, um, so, uh, no, uh, one of my uh, my colleagues who's a psychiatrist just said, pseudoscience, so I spent four years in residency for what? <laughs> I agree. Like, we, we went to school. We did the work. We did the training. And so psychology, psychiatry, we're real scientists, and we, we really help people. So You should stick around if you can. Yes. Um, this is related. We're going to be talking about customer service. Oh, absolutely. With Roy Ann Dean and Morning Brand. <laughs> And clearly, mental health issues play a major role in the customer service we receive in this country, I'm sure. Um, uh, Dr. E is going to be with us when we get back after the news. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Johnny Cake! Another moon on a sun I'll be drinking rum And I'm gon' party Cause the weekend come Right now I'm feeling nice Got the bears on ice I'm gon' drink all day And gon' be by some tonight Yeah, that's cause I lose the bear drum You know I come here to dance My turn to hand me some rum I only pop bottles, you know the plan Oh yes, I feel the bear drum 240 ounce, I is mine For ten gen, I just need somebody To bring my big calicron Oh yes, I if you was born on this day, okay. I get what you thought, yeah, we take a shot, so just send tequila this way. My lord, I feel a dead drunk. Woo. I know you hear what I say. I care if you in your twenties or in your fifties and your hair gray. Another moon on the sun, I'll be drinking rum, and I'm gon' party cause the weekend come. Right now I'm feeling nice, got the bears on ice. I'm gon' drink all day, gon' be bust up tonight. Yeah, that's cause I look so dead drunk. I place it up my eye when This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Blend Business on this Friday, May 24th, 2024, 524 24. Uh, Welcome back to our Morning Blend listeners. Once again, I'm Dwight Straw and my special guest co-host today, Dr. E, Dr. Rika Richardson. Great to have you sticking around with us. Thank you. This has been interesting, Friday. Oh, it'll get even more interesting now. Well, it's our time also for our monthly morning brand series, and we're very pleased to have back with us uh, Roy Ann Dean. Roy Ann Dean with Onward Advisors. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Morning. I'm sure you've been hearing how it's been going so far, Roy Ann. 
I have. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> you can finish your introduction, though. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. You. Right, right, right. Well, uh, I'm Roy Andy with Onward Advisors. So this morning we're going to be talking about customer service. Always a big issue, and um, so many things to talk about there. We, I'm sure, we don't have enough time. But let's uh, let's begin by, and we, we're going to tie it into Mental Health Awareness Month and um, and the challenges that we're seeing. <laughs> Maybe they are related. Maybe that explains it. All the way. Um, but, Rory Ann, you've had some interesting experiences over the past few weeks, and everybody does yes. here. Um, um, and, firstly, and, this, yeah, this, mm-hmm. this is a very good segue because um, I, I have to say that every time I do have poor experience, specifically in banks, which, it was, which is what I'm going to talk about today, I feel like I have bank rage, um, which is a very specific type of rage. Uh, that happens when I go into banks and the customer service is terrible. So I feel like that is a that's a very apt discussion today to deal with them. Well, there you go. Bank it's rage. Kind of, Describe you know, it to us. Rage. What do you mean by that? Um, in my head, I'm doing actions that I cannot do in real life because <laughs> I am that angry. You know, um, because I think I feel like some things are very simple. Um, to carry out in terms of customer service and providing just even like a basic level of good customer service, but it doesn't happen, right? And it's not the fault of the people who are working there. It's the systems that are designed um, that are not adequate. Uh, so I, I, I can't even explain to you, um, but I did have one, one instance where I went into a bank and they had balloons up everywhere with smiley faces, like drawn on the balloons with markers. And it was all these posters like, you know, you're the focus of our existence, like that sort of thing. And I was thinking to myself, this is exactly the opposite of how I feel right now. And I want to burst every balloon in here. Oh, wow. But can't do that because, you know. You know, what they'll tell you, and we're hearing that a lot from banks especially, is that, well, you, you don't really need to come inside here. You you should do this online. Oh, and uh, the, oh, but you do. because, And I have a story about that. Okay. Tell us about it. Yes. So let me let me let me set up what what um, what I want to talk about today. So over the past month, I've had two two major instances. Well, my age. I have two. I've had two two instances with two different Canadian banks. Okay. Um, first instance, the credit card was uh, I had fraudulent charges on it, right? Which I did not get an alert for, um, but I found out because I was not able to use the car anymore because they just like ran it up, right? Um, and I reported it, they canceled it, however, did not order a new card like they said they would, mm-hmm. okay? Um, that's one. The second one is that I needed to change an email address on an account and another, and another, another bank. I needed to change the email address and you cannot do that on any platform like you have to go into the bank apparently to do this oh that's you can't change it on like the online banking platform right um you have to go into the into the bank so you have to sound the line to speak with somebody so that they can change your email address but they cannot change it right there like that takes three to five days apparently (laughs) um and now it's been like three weeks and it still hasn't been changed why? Because apparently the form that I filled out there, like nothing ever happened with that. Um, and after calls and emails, like nothing happened. So it took going back into the bank and getting someone to actually e- email the form again. So we'll see what happens. Oh, so it's not okay. resolved as yet. Still not. No, it is not. Yeah. Still not. All right. So, um, and, and you mentioned, so it, here's, yeah, yeah, go on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the, the thing is about that, that really got me thinking about what are the customer service standards, right? And that is important to a, a business and a branding uh, discussion, especially in the case of Canadian banks, because those standards, it's the same brand, right? Even though the headquarters for this region is not in Canada, I mean, ultimately, the brand is a Canadian brand. Mm-hmm. And there are standards that... Um, as a brand should be maintained across all of the operations, right? You should have basic customer service standards, just quality standards, period, that represent your brand, and that should be consistent. Yeah. So the question is, 
is that consistent? Do we get the same level of customer service in, let's say, the region in the Bahamas that one would one would get if, if one went to the same company, Absolutely. same excellent, retail type excellent of operation questions. in Canada? That's what I was going to ask you, right? Because uh, people have said it all the time. They would this would never happen if you're at any of their operations in their home country. Yeah. So you say it's not necessarily the fault of the people, but we have to wonder. What's the difference, right? So uh, is, well, are we sure it's not the people? Yeah. I mean, here's, here's the thing. The people are going to do what their systems are. They're going to follow procedures because that's what banks do, right? So what I did was I, I said, okay, is this the same? I don't think that it is. Why is it not the same? When you have, uh, you know, you and I had an earlier discussion about how consumers can... Um, be more active in voicing their opinions when they don't like what a company is doing. Right. And that company can, you know, they're more inclined to change what they're doing. And that can be in terms of, you know, people are like, the, the price for this is too high or, you know, we don't approve of your action in this particular area. Yeah. That company um, might change the price or change that activity right. or apologize for what Let's they did. Let's put that into context that for happens. folks. Let's put, so they understand. Yes. So, so Target well, and well, McDonald's. What I, what I was going to say about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Target and McDonald's in the U.S. After people got on social media and complained about how prices are getting so high um, and Target sales are down, they've uh, adjusted they've the prices, it, right? right? Target adjusted the prices on thousands. If right. not millions and McDonald's of is doing it right, right. now. And McDonald's has uh, special values. Right. Mm -hmm. in, I think Wendy's also did it as well in the mm -hmm. U.S. Um, uh, and as as Royanne said, that, uh, that was in response to customers making complaints. The companies were right. responsive. Um, would that happen here, anyway. even with the same so brands? I, yeah, it's the it's the same brands, but here are the some of the forces that in, that influence a company's behavior. There's market forces, so the the baseline for that is competition, right? Um, and then there's kind of consumer consumer forces. They don't want to have thousands and thousands of people commenting on how, how on, an, on a negative experience, on negative pricing, because then you have like a, then you have a, you have this thing that's like a movement, right? But that again ties into the bottom line is how is this going to impact the right. bottom line, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it's not quite the same here because our, because our market is so small, not even from a, not only from a consumer based perspective, we have, you know, we have a small market. But just also from a competitive perspective, right? If so, those those are some of the reasons. That the and the third reason is on the consumer side. People in let's say let's go to the U.S. for example, they know that if they make they make enough noise, something is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yep. Here and so you have more activist consumers to that you know to that end. Right. But here, if people, I feel like people are more less inclined to complain or make noise because they figure what exactly is going to happen. Mm. Right. And that's just from, that's just a, like historical behavior, I suppose, but that feeds into that cycle of, I'm not going to say anything because nothing is going to happen. They're right. not going to change because I said something. All right. Right. So that leads us back to you so, and your bank situation. Um, uh, did yeah. you make any noise? Did you do, did you say anything? Did oh. you complain? And why would you stick around no, with the banks that, that would treat you in the way that you feel you're being treated? Well, so you know what? Going back to the, the kind of psychological impact, right? <laughs> the way that I describe these things is it's almost like you're in an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. You are. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, you know, they, they don't treat you well. They don't treat you like they want you to stay. But you stay anyway. Now, um, I've been listening to uh, a, 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 a professor who has a podcast, and I think he's very interesting and smart. And he used a term which I think is very interesting. It's called the uh, algorithm of deterrence. And what that means is basically, is it more costly in whatever resource you want to think about for to change. you to not do this behavior, mm -hmm. right? Mm. We know how long it takes to open a bank account. <laughs> 
we know all the pain of gathering the, the documents sometimes. And mm-hmm. in most cases, they don't tell you all the documents you need right at the beginning. <laughs> no, every right? day will be something different. So, yeah, and it, it's, it's a process. As they say, it's a journey, right? So the, the, the opportunity cost of you switching your bank and just like the headache and every, all the other things that go along with it, it's like this is kind of your algorithm of deterrence, right? It is easier for you to just like take what they're giving you because it is such a pain to switch. The second, the second condition is once you go to another bank, like how different is it? Which brings us back to the whole idea of is this brand, is this organization operating here at the same service levels, customer service levels that they are in, in Canada, right? One of the things that also governs how these companies operate with regards to customer service is consumer protection. So if it's not a market force that's, that's causing that behavior, um, then it is, you know, regulation and mm. legislation that's doing that. So if we go back to the, the, the retail banking example, and I, and I, I look at this because I was like, what is... How, how is this not happening here, right? Let's say that you don't have people like me who are going to complain, um, but you have a lot of people that, you know, they feel some type of way about high fees. They feel, you know, they're not getting good customer service. Or when you have to stand in line for an hour to do something that, you know, in 2024, why do you have to stand in line to change an email address? Seriously. Hmm. So in... Like in in the U.S., um, there's the Justice Department and they have antitrust laws. So I don't know if you've seen um, this week that they're suing Ticketmaster and And Live Live Nation because they feel like that is a monopoly, which drives the prices up. And that's not good for the consumer. Right. In Canada, with the with the banks, there's the Financial Consumer Agency. And that is the regulator of, of all of the federally regulated financial institutions in Canada. Right. So that includes the retail banks. What they have is consumer protection framework legislation. And a part of that is that there's a, there's compliance requirements that banks need to demonstrate that they're building capacity with, which means that they have hmm. they're taking steps to implement and they're they're building systems and processes that can help them to be in compliance with this this consumer protection framework. And some of those things means, <clears throat> excuse me, that they need to have um standards, uh, standard operating procedures and codify right. their activities around like handling complaints, mm-hmm. um, you know, just making disclosures and like fee changes. Right. And this regulatory body, um, I don't think that it's been enacted yet. Like with, you know, how much they can impact, uh, fee increases, right. Cause you can't go, you can't have like a 20% increase in fees overnight. A, and then there's not a corresponding improvement in the service, service. offering. Mm-hmm. So these are some of the things that I look at, and I, I don't know if we have those things here, right? Yes. There is mm-hmm. some level of consumer protection, but mm. I don't know that how much does that extend to, to banks, right? So, for example, I made a complaint, and um, the customer service person who uh, actually, and it was a Bahamian who was handling like the first level of the customer service, she was great. And she actually elevated my complaint to um, someone else from like a specific department that handles those complaints. And this person from that department said, okay, how, how can we make this right? And my answer was, I haven't even thought about that because I have such low expectations of what this bank will actually do that I didn't even think about that. That is definitely an right? abusive relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. And I'm like, but here I am. <laughs> right. And I'm still just pining away for what, what are they, what, what can they do? And so when I did mention, I, I said, okay, give me points on my card. Oh, uh, that's a different department. Oh boy. Okay. That'll right? turn oh, you off. Boy. So yeah. It's like, well, what are we really doing here? Mm. So, I, she wanted to know if you wanted candy, if she could give you some candy or chocolate or something to yeah, pacify give me, you. Give me some balloons, maybe. Yeah, right, right. right. Wow. So, you know, but it's like they're, 
if these standards aren't the same, then why are they not the same? Mm -hmm. We, you know, I mentioned some of the market forces that help to drive the behavior of, of companies in, in big markets. And we don't necessarily have those, those forces, yeah. but what we could and should, and again, I'm not saying that I, whether I, I don't know if this type of legislation for consumer protection exists here, but these are some things that could happen in order for these, these standards to be the same across this brand. Cause you know, if there's no incentive for the organizations to have the same level of customer service here, nobody's complaining, you know, there's no legislation, then we're going to be at the same level and people are just going to go home and complain. Or tell their I friends, can't say they aren't complaining though. Cause I'll see the, tw yeah. I've seen the Facebook posts. I've seen the social medias and, and when one person starts and everyone's talking about their Zoom, their same experience with these cons um, banks, mm -hmm. I just don't know if they are taking it seriously. Cause I've never seen anybody who can go back and say, well, the bank has then made this new change and implemented it for better customer service. And right. I'm telling you, um, the only reason I do banking is because I have a banker. Like I called her and that's how I get stuff mm -hmm. done. If I did not have oh, her, but, I would remove all of my you. funds. So I tell her when she leaves, I'm taking call. my money. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Say that again. Somebody answers the phone. Have you have you tried to call and get in contact with somebody yeah, in a branch? Very hard. No, and now we've gone yeah. to a level. I have her personal phone. number. Right. Yeah. That's the only way I get stuff yeah. done. And she's not even in the same department yeah. anymore. But I refuse to work with anybody else mm -hmm. because yeah. you don't get a level of customer service that we've established in a working relationship. And it shouldn't be like that. And huh? it should not. It should not. But um, Royanne, to like, Doctor E, they make you feel like you're not like valued. Yeah, it's like, you know, been a piece of like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. To Dr. T's point, um, okay, so people posting on their own Facebook page, I mean, that's not the same as going on the, the bank's page. No, they right? go on the, bank's, go on the page, bank's page and they will have a thread. And I've seen several people have threads and then they'll, and then someone will be like, you have to know somebody specifically in that branch to get something to be done mm -hmm. for you. And that sucks that we have to go to that level in order for customer service to happen. Here's, and it's not like that abroad, I can posting, tell you. If you're posting if you're posting on the bank's Facebook page, mm -hmm. that's one thing. Are you filling out the customer survey the customer complaint form uh, survey that they send? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you filing an official complaint? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Um so and going back to this regulatory body in Canada, you know, some of the ideas that they need to implement, and I think this is something that this is very, very low hanging fruit. <laughs> that could happen here. You know, in addition to the customer surveys, then why don't they have, um, you know, kind of market roundtables where you can actually have customers to come in, like a customer, um, a customer panel, a customer advisory panel that can give you actual feedback in real time. Yeah. Because I have completed um, at least one of those surveys and it's like a lot of questions and it takes, it takes a long time to do that. Wow. You know? And one time I actually, with another experience, I completed everything on the bank's website and then like it didn't send or didn't save or whatever. So I took my time and gave like a very detailed uh, account of my terrible experience. And like, I don't know where it went mm. oh boy. From, on their website. Right. You know, Call they need to get more feedback in real time because yeah. Like, there's no there's no reason for them to change their behavior and they obviously haven't even after they see all, see all the complaints on social media absolutely callers we'll get to you in a second but this is an interesting point you're raising Royanne we, we saw the chairman of the PLP who is an MP and a cabinet minister um, he's been complaining quite a bit about the fees and how banks are treating people um, quite a lot yeah. over the last year but again like you say where's the legislation we know they've stepped up they've mm. beefed up the consumer protection um, um, legislation um, and uh, that's in effect now, but um, some of the specific issues that you're talking about, right, matching the service that you have in other jurisdictions, uh, that's not really a requirement, and um, you have to wonder what that's about. And Indeed. also transparency in fees. Like if you make a transfer to another bank, does it tell you how much that's going to cost? It doesn't. If you have to make... Um, uh, like a, some sort of payment, like online payment for whatever, does it tell you what fees are associated with that? Mm. Well, I think it depends on the bank. Before you make it? Some do it and some don't. 
right? And that's and that yeah, also so needs what, to what be standard. I'm is that the regular the regulatory body in Canada that I mentioned just now? They mandate that, right? Like you have to do that. You you the, those banks have to send um, an alert if they you do. have a low balance, right? They have to tell you that you will not be liable for any charges that are related to your credit or debit card if you if you if you have fraudulent charges. Right. And Is it doesn't take so again? long to get the the monies back or a new card like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. All right, we're talking with Roy Ann Dean. We're talking about customer service and um, um, just the standards we have here versus other places with the same brands. Right. What's that about? Um, give us a call, 323-6232, 325-4316, Call us toll free, 242-300-5720. Continue to text us, 422-4796. Let's take this call. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning, Greg. Hi. And, and to your uh, guest in your studio, I just wanted to join with your previous caller uh, in in stating my concern about the banking system here in the Bahamas. Years ago, I think it was in the 70s, um, Oscar Johnson stood in the House of Assembly and called for the regulation uh, and a review and regulation of the practices of banks and insurance companies in this country. And um, one of the in- interesting observations he made then uh, is this thing about the association of clearinghouse banks. Um, uh, uh, in other words, uh, banks associate themselves. Uh, they don't compete. Should, should, they shouldn't be associating. They should be competing in the best interest of the behaving people. And, and everything that they do is, is geared just towards their own uh, their own self-interest, the, the bank's interest, and the Bahamian uh, uh, um, bank, uh, banking uh, uh, population, uh, con- the consumer, is always the, the second consideration. Wow. And when one looks at the financial statements uh, and, and sees the hundreds of millions of dollars that they are making, the, com- the, the, the Canadian banks in particular, off the backs of Bahamians, charging fees that are unexplainable and certainly not chargeable in Canada, and yet they get away with it here. And then they decide on interest rates co- collaboratively, collectively, and then and then they, they, they further embarrass and insult us. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Uh, you, have, you have established a, a line in your bank uh, for disabled and senior citizen, and you discontinue that. And your explanation is because uh, um, it costs you some money? Mm-hmm. Can, can you imagine that you, at a time like this, mm-hmm. uh, cutting the staff in some of these banks because of automa- automation, and, and then making the Bahamian public have to wait for hours to get served in a bank? And, and there is no consequence. The consequence is if you complain, you become blacklisted. And I think the time has come for, for someone to take the initiative, I don't know how we do it, to, for there to be a reality check on, the, on, on, on these banks. And I think the best reality check is, is for uh, um, the powers that be to find some competitive situation that will bring these Canadian banks to their senses. Someone, some come, uh, they allow banks from America, from from wherever, um, um, from China, from 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 um, Africa, allow them to come in and compete with these Canadian banks. Because the truth of the matter is that the Canadian banks get off get off with things in the Bahamas that they cannot get a, or, um, get a over with in Canada. Well, and, this and, is and, what um, um, Ryan is, is saying, though, right? Social so- conscience. Even I mean, you can't force the bank to come, but um, but the legislation that's that's a simple fix. The legislation that will say you cannot do things here that you don't do in your home country, right? Um, that that would solve half the problems we're facing right now. But um, we we need our lawmakers to to realize that they need to play a role in this. I 
think yeah. the caller Did we lose him? Okay, thank you so much. About, about, about competition, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, I know many years ago we had we had Barclays, we had, right. we had um, British, we had Bank of Montreal, Chase, we had but, Citibank, we had we had American banks, we yeah. had British banks. Yep. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm not really sure why we don't have uh, more more banks from different. From different regions, I I don't I, I I can't say that I know you know exactly how that works in terms of exchange controls and like monetary systems, etc. But you know you can buy Canadian dollars here, you can buy pound sterling, um, and you can buy USD. So the question is, you know, is there an opportunity for a more competitive um, sector? You know, can we get some online banks? I personally do not want to go into the bank, like period. Um, but I know, you know, you might have to do that on occasion. But if you have a, a, a service offering which doesn't require you to go into the bank, um, then, you know, can we have that? Yeah. Well, he, ma he made a very banks that exist in the world. interesting point yeah, about the <laughs> oh, yeah, the yeah. Clearing Banks Association. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, they all have the same hours of operating hours, right? They all decide they're not going to be open on this day. They all decide that, which is, you know, you know, well, there's no competition. Um, they are one cartel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's take... But, you know, hmm. just, just make, make more, just make more services available online, Right. Because you have many people like me who do not want to go into the bank. I, I'm like, if you need to take a letter to the bank. Why can't like you just you upload need, it? If you want to break a term deposit, right? You can't send a letter. Like, you have to physically take a letter. In 2024, in the year of our Lord, why do you have to physically take a letter to the bank? Like, or if they give you a reference letter, they can't send it to you. And you have to go to the bank, stand in line to get a letter. And when I, I had to do that one time and I was like, is this going to be on like special, you know, watermarked, no nope. fancy paper? No, it is like on the regular printer from the printing machine that not only am I paying for this letter, but I have to stand in line to get a letter. Yeah. You should be able to and order that, that online and just, even if you just had to pick it up. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Also, um, what would happen if you, if you see, here's, here's the issue that you run into with that by requiring people to come into the bank for things that can really readily be done online, you're disenfranchising people who A, may not have the means to go into the bank. B, like, do all these banks have ramps? No, they don't, right? So, and if you need to do business with this bank and you are not in the country, on the island, how can you how can you do this, right? Like for, in the case of my email, for example, my email, email, I had to go into the bank. Like, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay, let's take this call, and then we want to get to um, some uh, a conclusion. Like, what what exactly do we think the real issue is here? Because I, I think the anyway, we'll save that for after this call. Good morning, call. You're on the air. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing well. Um, if we're going to talk about banks, you'll have a show for the next year talking about banks and bad service, man. Because I think all of us are, have, our, have our nightmares in banks as far as they tell you they want you to become digital and use the ATM, but a lot of times you go to the ATM, the ATMs don't work, or you go to deposit money in the ATM and they don't deposit money or they don't withdraw money. And when you go into the bank, it's like, you know, there's one teller serving people, and it, it, it takes you like three and a half hours to do a banking. If you try and call into a bank and serve the trip, it's like almost impossible to actually speak to a physical human, you know. So banks, I don't think they're ever going to change until the government puts something in legislation somewhere, consumer protection or, you know, like, I think having a business license, you have to have some quality of service or standard of service that you provide to our customers. And I think the government has to step in and force that before things really change. But as far as customer service in general in the Bahamas, I think customer service in general has gone down a whole lot because a lot of times the just complain, make noise, 
but they don't go to their office. They don't say, okay, let me take it to another level, and they don't demand more. So I think that's part of the problem, too. The unions need to just demand better service for the money they're spending or for the time they're spending patronizing business businesses. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Right. Appreciate it. Yep, and 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 <laughs> call centers. That's another whole hour, right? Um, um, as you try to call it, these it, places, the, the hour that you're on the phone waiting for a call that lasts for two minutes because it was so simple that like was this really necessary anyway? Um, but yeah. No, so. I and I and I just I want to I want to reiterate though it it isn't the people in the bank like when you. When you have to go in there, if you have to deal with somebody, they I have found them to be helpful, right? My point is that the systems that are in place Don't are not, up. in yeah. my opinion, consistent with the systems that are in place uh, regarding customer service in, in other locations where those banks operate, and in particular in large markets. Mm. All right, let's get to some of these text messages, and then we want to get to our conclusions here. Uh, this person says here, um, uh, last week I visited the drive through of a local fast food restaurant and ordered a meal. I then inquired about a dessert on the menu, and to my surprise, the uh, woman responded saying, I don't drink that. I don't know how it is. I was taken aback by the adamant negative reply. I replied telling her she really had very poor customer service skills. I mean, <laughs> it was maybe her delivery. Right, Sometimes maybe. it's not. A, it was. It was nothing wrong with what the person said. I think it was the delivery. Of it probably. A, she could have just say, you know, ma'am, it's something new on the menu. I haven't had a chance to try it yet. That would go off differently that, than. That I think. I think that that, that but also <laughs> the fact that she. She didn't know how to answer that question, right? So I, I going back to what that last caller said about us actually providing feedback. That is something that 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 franchise owner I, they need to know that mm -hmm. because we have to provide them with the feedback on that customer service delivery, especially when you're dealing like person to person. Provide that feedback because in this case, you know that service is only as good as the person who's providing it. And when they do their training, you know, these are things that they know, okay, this is some of the feedback that we've gotten from, you know, the, the server at the up. window. Right. These yeah. are the things that we need to focus on. So we, we have to, we have to be more aware of providing feedback in a way that customer uh, companies can implement those, those necessary changes. And yeah. I think that would, that would take us to where we can make some recommendations today, right? To not, again, just get on the, get, you know, get on here and talk about our poor customer service experiences. But what are we recommending mm -hmm. that yeah. in particular, um, you know, we, we can do as consumers and recommendations that these institutions can do to get more feedback and understand that they need to make some changes in the delivery of the service. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, ga mm, guess like your doctor uh, or what I expect from talk shows, I have been saying these things and the doctor is saying the same thing. Um, the Bahamas needs to step up professionally at all levels of service in the Bahamas. So until we agree the thing on things... This will always be this way, the same way, the same old stuff every day. Additionally, we do not have enough qualified um, workers to meet the demand of businesses. Do we think that's true? I think a part of it is true lately, but also people, a lot of institutions cut back on their level of employees that they can hire after the pandemic because they went to an, an economic downturn for themselves. And so when you do go in the banks now, I could even think, there may be two or three tellers um, that are actively working. And I say that because the other ones may be doing other stuff where they may be on break or whatever. And then you see the line and you're trying to understand the flow of service or even somebody greeting you and saying, hey, I just want you to know right now um, there there's a, a delay because we only have two members. So it might take a, a few moments. 
I sure every bank has a customer relations person. Why aren't they in the lobby, yeah. like greeting you and saying that, and we'll be with you or giving you the forms? I remember they used to be at no, some point. Still are. And I had an experience where the line was very long, and someone came over to me like, "What are you here to do?" Right. And I told them they said, "Okay, come, let's do this at the ATM." And they said, "I said, but usually this doesn't you work. Do this at the ATM. It takes two or three days before right. it clears. No, I will make sure that it works." Uh, and they had to do right, but so right. And then she did that for everybody. Like, that's what's what do you really hear? for See, that let's helps. go over here and I can help you with this yeah and, but again you know, but that's again, not it common goes back to what are the systems what yeah. are the systems that are in place yeah. right yeah. so can you improve your your customer service by providing better systems right if there were a way for you to to do that that service that you wanted to do Dwight without going into the bank you might have taken that option oh definitely right absolutely so definitely. I'm seeing Let's know. look at let's look at the systems that are in place yeah. to provide a better customer experience and better customer service in addition to you know making sure that people are trained. All right, so let's get your final conclusion. So I'm going to say, Roy, so, I, I want to hear from you, but I'm going to say things will not change unless it is mandated by the government. It, this this is nothing. This is not a bank situation, uh, uh, an, an issue. This is because they're allowed to get away with it. They're going to do this. They don't have to meet the Canadian standards or wherever they come from um, because we just are a paradise for business as opposed to for consumers. And until the government... Mm -hmm realizes that they need to be uh, on the Our side advocates? of the people who put them there, as in the elected, the people of the electorate who put them there, as opposed to playing up with big business, it'll always be like this. Um, but what's, what's your final word on it? So ultimately, I think this, this in this case, if, we, if we're saying that the way to go is to have um, a regulatory body that can you know, implement procedures towards compliance with you know, consumer-friendly um, behaviors and processes, then the consumers need to speak up, right? If you are, are filling out the surveys, you're, you're speaking with your bank manager, but you're putting things in writing, right? You're calling the head office. You're writing the head office. If we really want things to change as consumers and we need to put those things in writing and make it official, don't just put your complaint on Facebook because the, the social media person is handling that they may or may not keep it on the keep it on the page, you know. Put your put your complaint in writing. They That's can one. remove that the post. Absolutely. That, well, yeah, but yeah. the second thing is that if we if we want if we think that legislation is important, then reach out to the regulatory bodies um, and have it in writing, you know, because we there's no incentive for anything from uh, from an organization to change. Um, the, unless consumers want that to change. If things are going well and they're making money and they're profitable, what, what is their algorithm of deterrence? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Roy and Dean, thank you so much. Always a great conversation. We'll see you next month thank for you. more Morning Brand. Let's take a quick break and then we'll be back to wrap things up with Dr. E. This is Morning Blend Business on Guardian Radio 96.9. $100 into the CFAL Savings Express Plan and make sure your money keeps growing. Earn interest on your savings while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank. Ready to invest? Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at CFAL, your interest is our interest. Visit CFAL.com to start now. CFAL, growing wealth for future generations of Bahamians. Attention ice cream lovers! Are you ready to elevate your springtime indulgence and taste of luxury with haagen -Dazs? For a limited time only, treat yourself to the quality of haagen ice cream for just $8.99 per pint. Yes, you heard that right. Indulge in the finest flavors without breaking the bank. This exclusive offer is available at all Lickety Split and Super Value locations. Experience the premium quality of haagen at an unbeatable price. Spring has never tasted this good. Earning zero interest on your savings at the bank? With as little as $100, you can start earning interest on your money while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank with the CFAL Savings Express Plan. Ready to invest? Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at CFAL, your interest is our interest. Visit CFAL.com to start now. CFAL, growing wealth for future generations of Bahamians. 
The signs are clear. It's time to pay less for your current mortgage by switching to Scotiabank. Enjoy lower interest rates and no payments up to two months when you switch to Scotiabank today. Plus, we'll even pay your switch costs. It's that easy. Ready to switch to Scotiabank? Call us today at 242-356-1697 or visit bs.scotiabank.com to switch your mortgage to become mortgage-free faster. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. And be sure to pick up today's Guardian Business section for the latest in business news. Uh, brought to you by CFAL, growing wealth for future generations. Okay, our final minute here. Dr. E, you got a big event this weekend, uh, book signing and pop-up. Yes. Tell us about that. Yes, tomorrow I will be at Da Vinci Printing and Innovators in Village Road Shopping Center from 11 to 1. So um, they are the local distributor of my book, and so I'm going to do a pop-up event. So if you have a book that I haven't signed yet, please come by. <laughs> or if you want to purchase a book, um, make sure I come by because all of us, especially after this morning, can use this book yeah. because a lot of things aren't working well, for you. Right. And that is the name of the book. This yeah. isn't working for me and um uh, thank you for being here this morning really and appreciate thank you. It. it was it was quite entertaining and i hope everybody out there um realizes when they need a little help sometimes and get some help because it's okay to say that you're not okay okay but mm-hmm. to get the help for it yeah yeah don't just let it slide no do not let it slide and please check on somebody and it's friday have a little fun laugh today laugh i always say friday is a day where you start bring it in the weekend by a good laugh yeah, that sounds great Sounds great. Thank you for brightening our morning. Hope we can do this again soon. <laughs> we will do this again soon. I will be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Erica Richardson, always a pleasure, Dr. E. And everybody, have a great week. I'll be back on Monday with more Morning Blend and Morning Blend Business right here on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strawn, have a great day, everybody. Stay tuned for On the Clock with Aaron Green next. Mm-hmm.